We are live, guys. We're ready to go. Sneb has actually told me that he is ready to unleash his yeah. fury on this tea time. But we're back. It's actually been a long time since we had a tea time. We're back in business yeah. now. We've got Sneb, we got Nike, we got Deroya. We're talking about through the veil. I feel like that ArenaNet is really leaning into the um, pick it up, play it, and then come back when there's something new. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very much sold on this whole whole model. Um, I'm already excited for the next uh, expansion, honestly, because I because I, I know it's coming. It's like it's being worked on. This is the release date, and it's like I I am unironically a huge fan of uh, Soto and the way that they're dealing with. Uh, well, with the releases. So there's like a interesting thing that it's like a balancing act that in it has to get right. They have to make the follow-up patches interesting enough to like actually bring people back for. So they have to hold back some cool shit for them. But the initial expansion has to launch robust enough to make people enjoy it for the first three months till the follow-up patches hit, right? Uh okay. How do I say this? <laughs> I... <laughs> well, 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 here we go. We are live, guys. We're ready to go. Sneb has actually told me that he is ready to unleash his fury on this tea time. But we're back. It's actually been a long time since we had a tea time. We're back in business yeah. now. We've got Sneb. We got Nike. We got Deroya. We're talking about through the veil and all of the exciting things that have been happening. We've got Convergences, we've got the Strike CM, we've got the new map, we've got the new relics. I mean, wow, there, there's, there's, oh, we got the new weapons too, actually, new weapons are coming out, goodness me. It's almost, it's almost too much, actually, um, to talk about here. But let's just get into it right away. Let's talk about the actual update itself. And, and I kind of want to talk about it on a slightly more meta level to start off with, because I think that is almost the, the story here, is this update, it has now dropped. Here we go. This is the first quarterly update for Guild Wars 2. And this is what updates for the game are going to be looking like, in theory, uh, for the rest of time, right? This is what we should be expecting. Rest in peace, living world. Yeah. Rest in peace, living world. That is done. It is quarterly, kind of seasonal style updates now. So... First of all, how are we feeling? I'm super open. How are we feeling about this overall uh, as kind of the, the new content release style for the game going forwards? I mean, I can kind of start because I feel like... Oh, do uh, it. Do it. Yeah. I kind of like it. Boom. But but I, I also recognize that I I fall slightly out of like the 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 hardcore scene i guess i am uh, i'm in my pve era right now uh loving loving the the pve aspect of this game just mm -hmm. going hardcore grind going on that honestly honestly the transparency of like the release schedule and we know exactly what's coming we know what to prep for i can kind of like schedule my my calendar for mm. For release like that like i know wait let me actually let me open the wizards of all real, real quick here mm. i know yeah, that exactly. in 107 days there's the next patch we'll, right we'll yeah. have the next patch yeah it's fantastic kind of knowing that I, I i love that even even if it is like a smaller patch um because i mean it, it's like a a third of a map or at least like yeah I think that's a it's really, I think it's a really good point that you bring up there because I think, and this is, I feel like this has been a theme with Secrets of the Obscure. I feel like that ArenaNet is really leaning into the um, pick it up, play it, and then come back when there's something new, which is kind of like the a strength of Guild Wars 2. That's kind of the way that you're intended to play it if there is such a thing, if that makes any sense. And I think that Arena are really leaning into that uh, with certainly the way these updates are, the transparency, the scheduling. You don't, this is going to sound like a bit weird, but you don't need to be, like, hyper-engaged all the time. Like, in a way, the game is getting more and more uh, casual playstyle friendly, right? Like, you know, you don't have to be constantly engaged. You can just log in. You know when things are showing up. You can play. You can get your stuff done. You know what's coming, so you can, like, assign the time. And you can, like, fit your life around it, I guess, right? You know, or rather, yeah. fit the game around your life super easily. Like, the game is really focusing on its strengths, I think. Um, and what it does well. And it's doing it and really it's, well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It definitely like, is. Like, really, like, yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm very much sold on this whole whole model. Um, 
I'm already excited for the next uh, expansion, honestly, because I, I, cause I know it's coming. It's like, it's being worked on. This is the release date. And it's like, I, I am unironically a huge fan of uh, Soto and the way that they're dealing with, uh, well, with the releases. Now, the question is always going to be like, what, what's the actual content going to look like? And is that going to be satisfying? But for now, for me, where I am in my life, yeah, it works perfectly. I'm honestly, mm, yeah, I, no, no negatives really. Yeah, I, I think the the only thing that is interesting, um, and I think funnily enough, you brought this up last time we were we were talking about this, is that you are going to need to see the um, the next expansion to see the full picture because right now, um, this this patch is is a small patch, right, relative to say a living world update, mm -hmm. uh, but you got to think about the context behind this, right? Um, like whenever we've had Guild Wars 2 expansions before, we've had an expansion, then living world, then basically a drought, like sometimes like a year of nothing potentially. Mm -hmm. And what's going on here is that now, instead of that year of nothing, there's just going to be another expansion there. So the individual updates are going to be smaller overall. And the amount of content overall is probably going to be similar, maybe a little bit more overall in terms of like actual volume over, let's say, you know, a five year period, a two year period or whatever. Uh, but what What's being cut out is the gap there isn't going to be this um this really long drought where there's nothing going on like no communication no updates whatsoever so we're going to get essentially smaller updates but consistently and you know with with high frequency uh, as opposed to like a massive drop and then it kind of it peters off and then goes down to nothing right and then another massive drop as well i i think that is a little bit better you know i think uh overall um and funnily enough, very much the way MMOs are going. This is, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna derail. We're gonna talk about the Forbidden Game, but at BlizzCon, so interesting actually. At BlizzCon, Blizzard were talking about how they are literally doing the same thing as this, by the way, um, with their, with World of Warcraft, with their MMO. They are moving to a much more seasonal style system with uh smaller overall expansions, likely. Um, so less patches within less updates, but more frequently right um than has been done historically uh don't worry it wasn't a ripoff because these I are actually, no idea, actually yeah yeah these were in development in tandem so it wasn't like they were influenced by one or the other because this was like in the works for ages right obviously um it's not but, like the the sky scale yeah not like the sky scale it's not a sky scale situation uh but it's really interesting to me that a lot of mmos are kind of um going in this direction but if you think about it it it's it shouldn't be a surprise because look at modern live service games they're all seasonal right all of them they're, they're all mm -hmm. using this model um where it's all laid out so the player knows what's coming um, and you know there's a lot of transparency a lot of you know clarity in what the player can expect and like when that's happening when you can get your rewards right when you can log in when you can log out of the game basically like i think things are really uh, converging in these live service games to kind of drop in drop out gameplay right like um so that it is essentially very very casual friendly very very um uh like easy very accessible to get involved in the game uh so i think mmos are kind of catching up uh with the models that we see in other kind of ten you know uh adjacent genres um when it comes to these live service games so super interesting uh but yeah and no, i i i i actually am very much inclined to agree with you on this i think this will be a, I think it will be a very successful model for the game. Like, and it, it's because I think it really emphasizes the strengths of the game. And also the, um, I think it really focuses on the target demographic and the current audience of who plays Guild Wars 2, I think is really going to like uh, the model going forwards. Yeah, I think honestly, they really nailed it in terms of the demographic. And I mean, just the, the whole streamlined nature of like catering to, to people who also have a life next to, to Guild Wars 2. It's, I mean, mm. yeah, it, it feels like the right way for the game to be going. Um, but obviously, I and I can't stress this enough. I said this, I, I feel like I've said this a couple of times, and um, it has to be said every time. We still have to see the whole expansion in its entirety once it's released. Like, is it com comparable to what we want it to be? And do we actually like this going forward? Like, I can sit here in the middle of it and say, yeah, sure, I'm enjoying it. But at the end of the day, when uh, X Pack Five releases, I don't know how I'm going to be looking back on on Soto. Obviously, I I mean I kind of have an idea since I've been enjoying it so much, but you know, it still has to be viewed in its entirety. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the it, it, it's weird to say that, and you know, I. But yeah, looking at it as the complete package is going to be important. I think it's important to look at it uh, as a player in the moment as well, though, right? Because, you know, it, you can say, oh, yeah, you know, look, the expansion's going to be way bigger in, you know, six months' time. But that's 
that's a bit of a cop out. I feel like that's that's an illegal move. That's some witchcraft right there. You're not allowed to say that. Like you have to look at the updates and go like, oh, wait, yeah, is this enough to kind of keep you engaged with the game and give you new stuff to do? Like as a player who's continuously playing. Uh, but yeah, sure. I think there is that that element that yeah, when you buy Soto, let's say you buy Soto now, right? You're essentially buying a bigger expansion. Like when you buy Soto in in six months. You, a lot of the things that um, we kind of you know complained about a bit, like no legendary armor on launch, no legendary relic on launch, that's going to be gone, right? Like that problem will have been removed at that point. And you know what? You can riff to your heart's content, guys. Yeah, I'm going to riff. I am going to so, riff. So there's like a interesting thing that it's like a balancing act that in it has to get right. They have to make the follow-up patches interesting enough to like actually bring people back for. So they have to hold back some cool shit for them but the initial expansion has to launch robust enough to make people enjoy it for the first three months till the follow-up patches hit right and mm -hmm. i think soto launched probably a little under the line in in terms of a lot of the systems to get uh people excited or to keep playing it um like convergences, I think kind of like finish the rift system. Like before mm. convergences, the rift system felt incomplete and it yeah. didn't feel satisfying to engage with it whatsoever. But with convergences, it's like, okay, now I see what it should have been all along. And I understand why they delayed convergences, that, but I think if when they do their post-mortem they will look back and go we should have had convergences with soto and maybe had like only one boss and then just added like two more bosses each time because instead of having no convergences with soto now they're going to add two bosses each patch i i just think that it the they launched an unfinished sort of system in that regard and they totally did. And I think in, in a sense, it also feels like it obviously it was very intentional. And I would say, I would say like you're describing it really well in that convergence has kind of make Rift feel like a complete package now. I, I'd still say as someone who does uh, engage with this a lot and have been engaging with it from the very start, uh, there's still some loose ends to tie up in the system, um, such as like, I mean, the longevity uh, of tier three essences is basically just like down the drain. It's, it's a trash item in, in a few months time. Um, that still has, has a, a very, very big potential to be solved. But I, I mean, I think in a, in a sense that I'm appreciating the rift system so much more and the, I'm appreciating the, the convergence so much more because it was kind of delayed. If it kind of feels like now it's coming full circle and rifts feel reinvigorated. It feels more profitable. It feels so much faster now. And I, I wouldn't have felt that, so to speak, if I didn't have the, the, the flip side of the coin, which was the three months of grueling drifting in the open world. Well, that's, you're a psycho. So <laughs> I know. Most yeah. People yeah. I mean, I that. know. So <laughs> if you take a step okay. back and, and look at the system as it launched for 99.9999% yeah. of everyone else, like the system was like totally bad and i don't know i don't know i enjoy convergences you know what makes convergences good there's a timer and you now feel some like i don't know the elitist in me goes oh you can do a convergence in 11 minutes how can we do it faster next time and you know like that now i'm engaged with the i system. so want to see that if there yes. was no timer my satisfaction with convergences would probably be like half of what they are. But the fact that there's a little timer just adds that tiny little bit of like push yourself to do better that makes me want to engage with the content more. Have you been engaging with it? Yeah, I've been doing it once a day for the daily and then okay. trying to get the, I did the three weekly the first day, but then every day I've been doing it once a day. It's good. Yeah. One I, day it's good. You I get, think it, you get I, real good rewards. I like that the systems are linked as well. So, you know, you do the way they they want you to do it, right? Is they want you to do the convergences and then you kind of go and do the tier three rifts, right? Like and then you have can, six hours of rift. Exactly. Yeah. And you can go, you can go there. I, I like that those systems are kind of linked together. Like one thing that I also like, I, I'm not sure if this is actually going to see 
a lot of usage, to be honest. But um, this is going to sound weird, but I actually like the way the unstable cryptus motivations operate as well, especially with the group, because basically... You? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you let, can let, have me open it and then kick me immediately. That is right? funny. So, that can happen. But part. let me explain what I mean do, by do, that. Do, do, do you like it simply because you can now buy legendary PVE armor? Um, that's something that's good. But the the design aspect of I like <laughs> is actually the social aspect. I like the idea that you could have. Let's say you could have a a, a guild group, right? Of say twenty people, and you could go and do this pretty quickly. I, th I think like we did a really fast, we did like an 11 minute convergence with um, like 30 people. I think it's optimal is probably actually less than that. Like we had probably a bit of, of extra players that weren't really helping. But what I like about that is that on the weekly, everyone in that group is going to get an unstable cryptus motivation, right? So you can basically go infinite if you play with your friends, if that makes any sense. Um, so, you know, you, you want, if you play with a guild group, um, you'll always have, entering essentially becomes free, right? Like you'll always have someone else to open for you, right? As opposed to you having to open for yourself every single time. And yeah, I think it's also kind of nice that you can buy, um, you can buy essence basically, because there's just no shot. Um, I, I will never rift in this game. I, I, it, it to me, You'd it's just pain. Pay, what is it? I, oh, 8, yeah. gold? I, I, I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather pay 8,000 gold. Honestly, that's nothing. I, I'd pay <laughs> way more than that. I was expecting it to be yeah. more. The fact that it's only 8k actually surprises me, but yeah, I'd play way more than that. I think that's, that's just different. current rate right now. Um, yeah, yeah, the the fact that um, you can actually do that, that has increased the probability that I get a legendary armor set, uh, the new ones, the obsidian armor, from 0%, like no way in hell, to yeah, I actually might get it now. Um, it's possible, because 8k gold, I'm not gonna lie, it's not that much. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing 8,000 rifts, okay? Let me put it like that. It's not, uh, it's not happening. I'm not a rifter. It's not gonna happen. You don't need you don't need to do eight thousand anymore. <laughs> yeah, I guess with the the, the, the thing is easier, with right? with the new mastery, even even like if if you just do the new mastery and you don't let's hypothetically not even count all the convergences that you do, it's only like what four hundred total. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. Yeah. Think, I think I'd break. It's still a lot. I think I I, 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 would, like, I couldn't handle it. I admit it. I, I look. It's been cut I'll, in half. I'll admit when That's I'm wild. beaten, Daroya. I'll admit when I'm I am yeah. too casual. Okay, for saying like I did. No, nobody can match you. You are literally the most hardcore player in the entire game. That is actually <laughs> a fact. Dude, dude, I I, I want to actually <laughs> expose this psychopath. By the way, oh you you had like it was what was it, eighteen map completions like week one. Like holy yes. shit! What what is wrong with you? Like <laughs> I I don't know. I don't. I like. <laughs> I enjoy the grind. It, it gives me a certain like feeling. Like I'm a very goal oriented person, not just a player. Like I like having these goals. Like, like if yeah. if if you think this is fucking wild, you should see my fitness tracking app. It's like, oh, I, yes, I am a psychopath. I know yeah. when it comes to I love stuff it. like this. See, it's good. I'm the same way, but only in Path of Exile, where yeah. like you're chasing <laughs> actual. Like stat big DPS, and gear upgrades. like pump or something. Yeah, yeah it's like it's and, like and, okay, and, uh, I, I want this item, and it's gonna cost me a hundred divines. Okay, I guess I know what I'm doing for the next eighteen hours, like turning into a goblin and farming till I get it. <laughs> but then my character goes up five percent in power, and it feels fucking great. Mm. So like, I don't know what what Deroyer's getting out of it. I am just I am just grinding. He's just grinding for purple. I just like. Purple in every hole. Everybody's already right? got the armor. Purple, purple in every hole. In every he's just, he's hole. Just skins. He's just farming for skins. Yes. At this point. Yes. I, I want to get Snebo in this. And I love it. Snebo's wait, 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 hold, get... hold up, hold up. Oh yeah, go ahead. I, I know. Sorry, not the not the yeah. cut the Snebo off here at all. But I I have a real quick um note on the unstable crypto's essence because that is actually one of those uh things that were added that now I feel like has like a, a loose end mm. that needs to be tied up because. I find, like, as, as much as you, like, praise the, the thing that you can, like, keep going infinitely, I would say that there's a fault in the system and the fact that there's no incentive for people to actually use the Unstable Crypto's Essence, as as opposed to, like, every other Rift. Oh, like, so you don't get, the like, whole Rift system is, opening? like, yeah. yeah, no, you don't get, you don't get anything yeah, okay. from doing it. Yeah, but, yeah. but the whole Rift system is, like, you throw in the motivation, you yeah. get extra loot. Th this is your incentive. Like, Sure, you it opens it up for everyone else, but you also get uh, extra loot, mm. and there's none of that for the unstable crypto's essence. I feel like that's a that's an error that needs to be closed. Mm. I I don't know. I I kind of feel like they will in the future, and that the tier two variant armor is going to be 
is going to be using a new material that will pop will pop out of that um and it will get, actually give players an incentive to use the yeah, unstable yeah. crypt assessment but that but that means we got four months of just tossing gold into the void yeah. and yeah, that, that is a little bit to me yeah i think that, i think that's fair yeah. that's very fair what are we talking okay, about now so bring I the juice praise them for the map okay um yeah. and the content on the map Ooh, good call the the map visually is is good it's more than adequate the uh map is event dense there mm. is constantly something popping off it is definitely the opposite of of any of the living story season four maps mm. that are like you know dead zones essentially like until they're meta if they even have a meta like they're just awful but the nios map it there's always events so you could literally sit there and just farm events all day i don't know what the point of that would be but you can and i guess the one reason to do that was mastery xp is that you can do that well, and as far as the meta goes the, the meta isn't on a timer as far as i know it just it, it just runs. goes just goes again yeah just and that's blast. so convenient like it was so convenient like other things it's like like let's say you're a player who only plays for like 45 minutes a day there's some times where you're never going to be able to do a particular meta event that you want because it's just not going to be there. Um, whereas the Nios meta, it's always there for you. You can always find a map with it happening, and that's really good. And I'll say the the end the fact that the end boss is an actual boss that has combat mechanics. Say what you will about them. It's it's basically the Echo Vault <laughs> boss yeah. all over again. But say what you will. It's a better boss than either the Amnitas meta or Not the Archipelago close, meta. Easily, the Archipelago meta, true. you just kill a bunch of trash mobs. The Amnitas meta, meta you like do yoga to, to kill the boss to death. <laughs> There's no engaging with the combat system. At least this one, you engage with the combat system. So it's like, I don't know. The, the Nios content is better than the Core Soto content. The map is better. The, the meta is better. And... In my opinion, the rewards are, are better. So, I don't know. Whatever you thought of Soto, you have to you'd have to admit that that this patch was an upgrade on that. So, if you were if if you thought Soto was generally okay, you you to be honest, you'd have to admit that this was a better path, like mm. better than that even. Yeah, I totally agree. And and you had a you actually mentioned a really important thing about both this meta, but also one of the reasons why I found rifts to be very. Um, respecting of my time is that you can just go at any time like at any time of the day i don't necessarily need to to gather people if i want to do the meta on nios let's go if i want to do a rift let's go um and i'm really really enjoying that the game is is respecting of my time in that sense yeah I can yeah. very much appreciate that certainly focus on with rifts and with convergences right you can just show up yeah. and just blast pretty much uh, and I think there's been a lot of very positive feedback to that, especially with rifts, uh, because it's not on a schedule. You can just go, um, whatever. And I, I am expecting them to add kind of a more spectacle-oriented meta event later on. In fact, I'm, if I had to guess, I would say that the meta event will probably be one of the ways that we encounter the actual big bad of Soto, the expansion, you know, the actual conclusion of the expansion. So I think there will so be a like time... Idea. Yeah, a bit like EOD. I think there'll be a timed meta event um, as well, so it fits in normally. But yeah, I think um, Nike's really correct about this. There's, there's a lot of events going on. We kind of saw this with Soto as well, and I actually quite like this. Uh, I think they did a really good job in Soto overall of all the little events going on that actually had a lot of storytelling going on in them. Like, you know, they, they weren't just like, oh yeah, some enemies are attacking. They, they actually were almost like side quests in a way compared to the main storyline of, of the expansion and of course of the main meta events on those maps so i think those are actually really good and, and that's kind of continued here they're a bit more centralized they kind of funnel into the the main theme i suppose but that's to be expected considering that we are you know we're attacking the demon realm or whatever uh, so i think the map actually is pretty good it's it's a high content map which is something that i do like Right, yeah, they were less stingy with the mastery points too. That makes me happy. Like, I feel like they were really stingy in Soto, but there's actually a lot more of them uh, this time. It's a lot more convenient to pick those up. You don't have to, you know, you have to don't have to complete everything in order to to max out, which yeah. was it was pretty painful on launch. I'm not gonna lie, it was it was a little bit of pain. Oh. It was a bit of pain. Yeah, doing that fox chest 
thing. Oh, I didn't do to that. Get the mask. Oh, oh no. I did those. Oh my terrible. god. Yeah, that is awful. I did. Oh, well, I did the first one. I did the Skywatch one, and it took like six hours. And I'm like, okay, oh I'm not doing it for the second map. No, mm. no way. Yeah, I'll it's brutal. It it's way. absolutely brutal. Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> Yo, I want to get I, some I just laid for a guy. I couldn't. Yeah. There's no way. Get in here. I I've got some good praise actually. So, do you remember like rewind in time when the return to achievements were active? Those mm. were quite successful for a few reasons. One, there's a big carrot at the end of the stick, right? There was a promise of a legendary, which is really cool. Mm. Um then the other thing that was really really good about that is it it threw you into different maps again. It revitalized old maps. I think rifts kind of do the same thing. They allow you to engage with the maps in a different way, and they bring experienced players closer to newer players, especially on the core maps. And they allow you to sort of jump in and maybe help a player with a meta or something as the rifts are going on. So rifts, extremely rewarding, give you the ability to go back to old maps and, and connect with uh, players and sort of bring them up to speed. I think any... Any opportunity where you can bring more experienced players together with less experienced players creates a knowledge transfer, and that's a really positive thing for the game and just the social aspect of the game. So I really like Rifts for that. I'm not a big fan of... They feel like um, they're really rewarding, and they, they really respect your time, and I think those are all the, the pros for sure. The con for me is they don't feel like they're, they're super engaging. I kind of feel like I'm just running from one place to another, and... Everyone stands there and the boss dies, then you just move on to the next one. So it feels like a really hardcore farm, which is which is cool and everything, but not necessarily super engaging in, in my eyes. If you if you create your own engagement, so you're kind of doing other things while that's going on, I think that it becomes kind of the perfect mix. And I would argue that's probably why most people like them, is you're able to engage in multiple things at the same time and it still feels really rewarding. I mean, to be honest, I think there's there's a post on the subreddit now that I think it's actually really interesting. Um, and I think this sums it up really well. It, that the post is is that they created a script to launch Guild Wars Two on your second monitor. Like you know, and by the way, this is not like a roast or anything. Like uh, for example, like someone who's really well known for this, right, is that you know Josh Drive Hayes. You know, he even he calls himself. You know, I'm I'm your second monitor content, right? I'm not gonna lie, Guild Wars Two is your second monitor MMO. Unironically, I think that's what it's trying to be, and I think that's the way a lot of people engage with it and there's nothing wrong with that right it's something that's kind of going on in the background that you're just kind of blasting away at and like you're chatting with your friends or whatever and like it's just kind of going on like maybe while you're doing another task right something else is going on at the same time um or or, or whatever right yeah i i i mean that's the way it is right and that's not a roast again like the you know that's hey what do you think twitch streams are what do you think this podcast is right uh like to an extent yeah right second like, monitor content. yeah we're second monitor content oh yeah that's what it's all about you know like, we're a prime time everyone else is ripping. yeah everyone else, everyone else is ripping um. like dude look it, it's actually like the chain okay people have got something on their main monitor they're rifting on their second monitor and tea time is on the third monitor right like that's what i'm talking about we got we're everywhere right we're all and over the, the place 20 afk <laughs> accounts Jen yeah. said and, ADHD and then, brain yeah. <laughs> And then something on their phone too. Yeah, you got it on the phone. phone. Yeah, you got the phone going on there. Right, you just got maximum engagement. Like your brain is getting maximally stimulated by everything (laughs) going on at the same time. Right, like. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's the way. That's the way I, I, I see it. Right, like that's. Uh, I think that is what the game is supposed to be. And, you know, we we kind of see that with, certainly with the, the meta events. Like, the meta events in the in the expansion, they are, they're not engaging, right? Uh, but I, I think that's kind of by design uh, to an extent, you know? Like, that's, that's what they're I actually there for. never hear people talk about them. Uh, well, like, positively or negatively. I, I never hear people yeah. talk about the meta events in Soto. Wow. Uh, am I, uh, and this is just anecdotal. So I, in a sense, I'm just asking like, do other people, what have you heard? Because I, what, I just do don't mean? hear do anything about, about them. What, well, they, there's nothing positive or negative. Are they just neutral? Do people care yeah. about them? Are they rewarding? Like what, what, what's the deal with them? They only they... give an amalgamated gemstone. That's they're not that great, are they? Uh, I don't think so. Not really. Not if you're, I mean, there's not really a reason to do it because like especially omnitas omnitas is a very long meta and i get i get why people would like try to skip out on all the build up to the actual boss 
because you can. It's very easy to do that. Mm. But I'll do them when they show up my weekly. That that's yeah. basically it. Skywatch is like all right. Um, it's like a fifteen minute kind of thing, and most of it is just picking up orbs, and the and the boss encounter is a little bit of a, a champion. I don't. It, it's it's really just a nothing burger because it really doesn't give you much. It's not very rewarding if you're not going for the legendary armor. If you're not going for the uh, pinches of stardust or whatever uh, the charge, whatever the thing it's called that you need thirty of per armor. Then I mean I don't personally see a reason to do them. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not flaming them, by the way. I just, I think it's interesting. No, no. There's not I really am, much of a discussion. I am flaming them. I don't like them. I don't think they're very good. But uh, yeah, I think that's partially why I, I don't, I don't think that people find them that much fun, to be honest. Um, overall, I think that's why I, I think players are going to enjoy the one on um, like Naos way more. Like for example, I like the a little one bit more Naos to it. because it has the clap I, yeah, I think mechanic, that one's decent. and I was a big yeah. fan of the clap mechanic in EOD. Yeah. It's it is a good when, filter, isn't it? You know, you yeah, uh, it exposes people. The same people. people die every single time. They can't find. They just can't find that pillar. That that their four thousand millisecond brain ping. <laughs> it's just a little too much, and they can't. They just can't find yeah. the hiding spot. And I like it. I like when you're in a squad because I'll target them when and yeah, it's it's great. I, th I think a lot of people just don't care. Like they lose they lose nothing from just dying. No, they do that. care. Then... They try to run. They just do it too late. Like they're like it. it they are very they're very lagged. Yeah, well, it's well, kind of surprising just... to me when people like uh, if they were just when sitting they there and miss still attacking. Now, okay, in Nios, because like the 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 time to get behind the pillar is so long as opposed to like the echo bomb. Like the the actual clap, like that's that's a short timer. You got kind of got to like act semi quickly. But Nios, like Ignatius or whatever the boss is called, is such a long. You have such a long time, and yeah. if you miss that, oof. I, I like it. Shame. Like, see, if the people were just like sitting there in melee, auto attacking, like and just not paying attention, okay. But these people are paying attention. They just have brain ping. And they're like, <laughs> like they like they realize just a second or two too late that it's too late, and they have like the panic as they run to the pillar and then die. Mm. Oh, it's so good! It's great entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot of urgency though. Is what I was trying to get at. I, I don't think, you know, oh no, I'm gonna die. But then people, everyone just reses you, so it's kind of fine. I feel like they do have urgency matter. because otherwise they would just stand still and die in melee. They try well, to make it. They're like, well, what, what I'm like saying the Jaws is movie it's, it's fake when, like, urgency. Everyone sees the shark in the ocean and they run out of the water and there's the one guy who's like kind of oblivious and he's like sitting in the ocean and the shark just like comes up behind him and eats him because he like doesn't realize it. That's them. Like they're the one guy who doesn't realize what's going on. Mm. And that's 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 great entertainment. But, but it doesn't really Spielberg matter. Figured it out. Though. That's good. <laughs> it, mean, it doesn't really matter. No. No, it doesn't. You're still going to kill the boss. So that's not the end of the world, I guess. You, yeah, you so will there's, win. There's not really urgency. Yeah. I mean, like it, it might I don't feel know. good if you, Look, you know, don't know. That's there's why the final meta in the last patch, they're, they're going to they're gonna drop the hammer snap. It's going to be Dragon's End 2. Okay. Oh, yeah. The last boss. That's probably not gonna happen. Yeah, no, that's going to happen. Do you <laughs> think you're setting your expectations too high? Oh, no. That, that that expectation is, <laughs> it, 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 yeah. If I was being serious, I would. But yeah, obviously, that's not going to happen, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it would be good, though. I, I do actually hope that they do add a more of um, a a boss that actually has mechanics like this is the thing that i would like to see in open world not necessarily a boss that's hard but a boss that has mechanics right like this guy he arguably has one mechanic where you hide behind but most other than that he's like spamming out aoe's right that do nothing right like that don't really do anything i do like a boss that has um almost like a bit more of a set piece to it you know stuff like triple trouble stuff like to right uh stuff like dragon's end like uh dragon uh dragon stand right dragon's end that kind of stuff it doesn't have to be hard but i like the thing where there's actually there's mechanics going on just like, oh, a bunch of random AoEs that you're just going to completely ignore, right? It makes it a bit more interesting. Like, um, I feel this way about convergences as well, to an extent. Um, I was a little disappointed. It wasn't a boss that it kind of does something. I, I know it's hard to do when you've got 50 people um, and you want to make it 
doable, right, essentially, or, or well, ideally, you know, I don't, I don't they really want you to fail convergences very often, but, like, for example, you know, you think about, like, the Demon Knight, the Demon Knight, he just literally just stands there and takes it, right, okay, like, even if the Meteors drop on you, nothing happens, I think it'd be really cool if they actually gave, um, if the Demon Knight in Convergences was very much like uh, Eye Keeper of the Peak, where you had to hide behind the Meteors that get dropped down by players, and then he does the one-shot. That would actually be really cool, I think. Sorrow is actually a little bit better in this way, but honestly, in some ways, it's worse, because Sorrow does have like more interesting attacks than the Demon Knight, but they're all just it spams CC on you. And it's like, well, you know, you just ignore it, right? You just you just sit there and take it pretty much. And it's like mildly annoying. Um, so I, I think boss design could be a little bit better. Uh, that was something that let me down about Convergence. It's like, oh, we're fighting champions that die in five seconds. Wow. Uh, this, you know, the, oh boy, you know, this is, uh, th this is good. Um, oh, so well, there'll, be, there'll be more hmm. in the next patch and then more in the next patch after that. So yeah, there'll be... There'll be you won't a variety. Get sorrow every other time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you can, you'll, you'll be, you know, you'll just rage quit when you get sorry. You just go, well, okay, we'll go get the other ones uh, yeah. instead. But yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's uh, is what it is. Uh, I, I do want to see how, how like many... a more of a set piece boss, right? That actually has like a little bit more to it than just like a bunch of attacks that it does. Yeah, personally, I would. I, I mean, I'm right there with you. I would kind of love Epart to be like a dragon then kind of thing. Yeah. Like, at least, at least have like one that's that's meaty and. And fun and interesting and engaging. Yes. Um, but I want to see phases. Think, like, I want to see think, multiple think, phases. You know, that's what I want. What's that ice brood map where you siege the castle called again? I don't. What? Wait. Oh, Drizzlewood, right? Drizzlewood. Yeah, I think oh. it's going to be Drizzlewood 2.0. Yeah, it yeah, could be. I could see probably. that. I think E Park will be at the end. We'll yeah, you got to. Like, you got to get in there. We have to go to like Castle Gray Skull where yeah, E Park yeah, yeah. lives and like break in and then kill him. Okay. Yeah. I think there's sense. a there's a gen general issue though with. Um, Soto maps, and it's that uh, it, they don't really have like a there's not an, a unique currency or like material that everyone like take the the ass like nobody nobody's gonna get ass on on the Soto maps. Um, I doubt that they will add that to to F Park. So like the longevity of a hardcore event in Soto is, I don't know, it 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 doesn't look all that positive to me. Um, it's because limited in, in um it's, it's limited in EOD too, right? Likely and, won't be there. And I think this kind of mirrors your concern with essences, actually. Um like Dragon's End popularity is kind of created now that EOD is past tense, actually. Um it, it does still get run, obviously, but it's it's a lot less active than it, it once was, right? And I, I think a big part of that is because again, people are looking at the new rewards, right? Like the new loot. I think there will be potentially an issue like that with um uh, with with essences like in the future as well like the the rewards are kind of like almost like locked to a slice in time right and they will kind of lose their relevancy a little bit um when new stuff comes along so i think arena yeah. do have to be a little bit careful with that essences maybe a little bit less so because you can i feel like legendary armor is going to be a really long-term goal for a lot of players so i think there's still going to be demand for it um uh, over time, I guess, and I guess you know you can still sell your essences kind of like indirectly by making the motivations and selling them to other players. So it might hold its value, but um, that that yeah. market is crashing hard. Yeah, though. unsurprisingly, when it comes to like yeah, tier tier three and tier two, like especially now that like with convergences, the yeah, it it, it is really just a matter of time before mm. T three uh, essences become absolutely worthless, like trash items. And I can't understate this enough. Like, it is it is so fast to get him now, and you need so few that that market is just gonna absolutely like tank. So unlucky. The longevity of that is a little it's bit over. right now. It's un unless over. they add something to that. Well, the other thing too is um, the game doesn't necessarily need everything to be evergreen. Um, True. With the current business model, uh, they they don't need it to be. So I don't know. I mean, because two two expansions from now, no one will care. You know, if if tier one essences aren't worth. Yeah, because it's just not going to be where everyone's at, right? Like it will be. Yeah. It, everyone will have moved True. on to the next the next farm. Right? But everyone's the, up to next. But at the same time, like I I don't predict like uh, rifts or convergences is dying anytime soon. Like uh, in that. That is kind of content that any player will be able to pick up solo on their own or like with a small group of friends and get their legendary armor for all of eternity. Like 
this yeah. is this is just the easy way to do it. So it, yeah, it doesn't need to. Doesn't in need in to a way, in a way, it will. Right? Yeah, in a way, it will remain evergreen, just to a new, uh, well, roster of people constantly changing. Yes, it actually so. kind of solves a good problem for the economy team for Anet. They can't keep adding new stuff, right? Adding new, Damn. like, Resources. they can't go, okay, the, the new meta gives 21 gold per hour. And then the meta that we add after that gives 22 gold per hour. Yeah. And the meta we after add, they can't keep doing that. So what they do is they, they make the bulk of the reward Count stuff me. that is yeah. highly valuable when the patch hits, but will decline with every patch that comes on. So that way it kind of naturally solves the problem of getting people there, but also getting people out of there when it's ship has sailed exactly i kind of expect to see that more in the future i think there was a lot of design in the expansion overall that was um that was kind of aimed at this right like they, they really wanted to try and fix the economy like everything is draining you right you know with um all the yeah. stuff in the wizard's tower right like you can spend loads of ectos right like it's buy 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 it's like a huge drain have you i mean have you seen the prices of tier six materials right now it's actually insane right it's crazy i think a tier six blood is 50 silver or something like that it's really really high that inflation um, hitting good yeah yeah it's it like the economy is being drained of all of the excess materials which is uh pretty oh good stuff they overall. have k farmers uh yeah what's up what's Value. Up? I thought they were i thought they were deflating the economy oh, oh uh, yeah, yeah turns out that was uh complete bullshit boom let's go um <laughs> i have maybe a hot there's take. no amount that will that will satisfy do it hunger. sneb bring the fire bring the juice i think that convergences were the meta event in a sense well it's just a different map it's kind convergences of are like dragon yeah. storm well it's like I they guess added what, dragon storm yeah essentially yeah yeah what, so what i'm going with that is one. I think we were told somewhere that there was going to be a challenging meta event. I think convergences kind of are that meta event. I'd be very surprised if the last big meta event is is like Dragon Xander or anything. I think the closest you're going to get are those convergences. And I don't think convergences are, are horrible. I, I think the bosses are a little bit weird because the mechanics don't really matter in the same way that Suan's mechanics mattered. But... Um, I don't think convergences are horrible. They require a little bit of coordination, which I think is positive for meta events. It requires a little bit of socialization, and that's that's fun. You know what, though? I think it's time. We've said that we like quite a lot of things about this patch, and we think it's good. It's good for the game. Um, let's get this out of the way. Uh, let's talk about the the elephant in the room here, the thing about the patch that is actually not good. And that is the strike mission CM. Oh, oh no. I'm going to disagree. Oh. I, I like it. Wait, yeah. what, do you, what? what do you mean? No, you don't. That's <laughs> bullshit. That is hard bullshit. Okay. Um, the strike CM isn't good. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's not good. It does not give me a lot of confidence about instance content uh, in Guild Wars 2. In fact, quite the opposite. Um, when I look at that, I'm just going to go no bullshit here. Uh, I don't think they tested it. Um, I don't know. I don't think they have a clear vision for what they want out of instance content in the game. Um, and it's just, who is it for, right? Like, who is that content aimed at, right? Like, I was going to say, like, haha, my team went in there and one-shot it, which we did. Um, but that's actually not telling you the full story. Like, um... Like you know, even like completely random pug groups with no coordination, not even on voice, were killing it essentially second try. What is it supposed to be? You might say, "Oh, it's going to ramp people in um, into the harder stuff." I'm sorry, you can't build a ramp when you release two bosses with two difficulty yeah, settings no uh, a year. That's not a thing. You cannot ramp people that way. That design philosophy is flawed. It doesn't work. It doesn't make sense in the context of Guild Wars 2. Um, they did nerf the health on the normal mode. I think that's good. It's still very, very slow. Um, but to be honest, if we can actually go in there and, and really be critical, I think the encounter design is, to be honest, mediocre at best. Um, there's not enough mechanical overlaps. Uh, the boss doesn't punish you for failing the mechanics nearly hard enough. Um, in my opinion, like I'm not even sure if some mechanics are working correctly. I'm not sure if you're supposed to be able to stack the greens right now. You can, uh, it's kind of telegraphed as if you can't, but you still can, uh, very, very weird. 
Um, the only thing about it that will probably actually get some groups is that the DPS check is not irrelevant. Um, it's not super tight. You know, if you have a decent group, you'll probably finish it with around four minutes left on the timer um, in that kind of region. But definitely some groups, group. yeah, like you yeah. can 100% fail um, if you if you don't have like some damage uh, kind of going in there. But uh, no, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Um, I'm very disappointed actually in the strike. I was definitely looking forward to it. Uh, even though I, w I had my trepidations about it because the norm mode is very weird on that one. Um, but in my opinion, I actually think we, we need an equivalent of the balance manifesto for instance PvE at this point. It's like, what is this supposed to be? What is the goal, right? Um, and, and, and why is it being, you know, what are we doing? Where are we going with this? Uh, because to be frank, I am disappointed. Uh, I think it is... Pro it's the easiest fight in the game. I also think it's one of the least interesting fights in the game as well. Uh, I don't have a problem with. I don't, I'm not saying every fight has to be like Omega difficult. I, that's you know that would be ridiculous in a game like Guild Wars 2. But I think it's way below the standard of difficulty and also below the standard of encounter design um, that I would expect uh, from Guild Wars 2. So yeah, this is the, the strike missions in my opinion are by far the worst part of Secrets of the Obscure so far. Um, and I am sad about it. I will admit that. I will admit yeah. that they aren't good, and I am also sad about it. I think there's something that's really important to note mm. about the CM. So the CM was obviously really, really easy for a lot of people. I mean, I got hard carried by you, and then I went and I thought, oh, well, maybe should I try to just do it with some people? I don't know. So I just went to my guild, and I just said, hey, whoever wants to jump in here just jump in we'll make some groups i i asked them how badly do you want to kill the boss and they're like oh pretty badly and i was like okay well let's let's make like a pretty busted comp let's just run a ton of scourges and stuff so we did that we jumped in and we killed it first try and that was weird to me because that hadn't really happened to any of the other cms for me <laughs> in that context mm. so i i was a little surprised by that i was playing with pretty decent players um but here, here's where things go really wrong for me. They, they being Arena, watched this, watched everyone kill at first try, and went, oh, that's probably not good. That looks really bad. So we're going to just buff the, the, the damage. There's more damage pressure. But this is just my opinion. I think it's kind of too late. Because once everyone's killed at once... They're kind of like, well, that was that was the you know boss release experience. It, it kind of no, kills uh, the magic a little bit. There's there's no other achievements. There's no. It also real didn't to do the CM again. It didn't make it harder, by the way. Not really, anyway. Like it, the the damage was not. I and look, I, I actually want to be careful. Well, there. Um, I do I do want to actually praise them for doing it because I, I believe that's basically the first time they've ever done something like that. I don't really remember them ever buffing a boss um before, so I don't want to actually go too hard. But I'm not gonna lie, it didn't really do much. It didn't really make the fight harder. Yeah. Or, or do, and, do you disagree with that, Nike? Do you, do you disagree? So there's a line in the sand between groups that are using a heel scourge and groups that aren't using a, a heel scourge. The groups that are using a heel scourge, the damage is totally irrelevant. The groups that aren't using a heel scourge, the damage is very relevant. It's, it's very noticeable, the difference. Uh, just because it, it is a fight where if you down at the wrong time like and you don't get like res relatively quickly it does punish you especially in when you're also in a bad group that doesn't have good dps like if you lose somebody in the first 75 or first like 25 percent like you might as well gg because the group you're in barely is going to beat the enrage timer even if everyone's alive so I don't know. I think heal scourge trivializes the adding the damage pressure a little bit more. Um, yeah. So I, I, I mean, I, I know Nico's got his elitist comment in chat, but you can watch watch pugs do this fight. Like people do dumb shit. People eat the pizza attack because no one in the game knows how to dodge anymore. Like, no one in the game knows how to dodge mechanics that you can't Aegis. 
So they just eat the pizza attack. They go into downstate and then you hit the 75% threshold. And now you're downstate in the middle of a AOE that pulses for 75% of your health per tick. And then you're dead. So like yeah. you lose someone at 75% every time in a bad pug. And, and yeah, you can say these people should not be doing the CM, but so what? That, these are the people that are doing it. Like you can only, you can't, and there's, there's no way to screen them at this point because there's not like, it's not like you have three months of kill proof that you can like look at and point to, you know, to say, oh, are you an, are you like a noob or are you good at this fight? No, you don't know. Um, and we don't have a way to look at someone and see what their parses are to see if they know how to do DPS. So I mean, there's, there's no way to, to weed these groups out and to get make sure you have a good pug with, with this fight. I, I definitely know what you're saying, but I think that funnels into the, the question that I asked, like, who is this for? Right? Like, I, I want to know what the vision is. Right? Yeah. Like, um, well, because, I've got some uh, thoughts for that. Uh, but because I'm having a hard time judging this. Like, for example, when I'm talking about, um, uh, let, let's say Soto. Soto is not an expansion that's aimed at me. But, I, uh, but the, the game, actually, in my opinion, really communicates what its purpose is. Right, and, and that allows me to look at it and go, okay, well, even though, yeah, sure, this is maybe not an expansion that was targeted at me, I can look at it and go, well, I can evaluate that based on what it's trying to do. What's the goal of Soto? What's it, is it serving its audience well? And I can go, you know what? Absolutely, yeah, 100%. I think it is doing that. But when I look at strike missions, I'm not sure. I'm thinking, is this supposed to be for me? Is this not supposed to be for me? And I find myself a little confused about this. Um, so that makes it hard for me to judge because I 100% hear what you're saying, Nike. Is this hard for the majority of the Guild Wars 2 player base? Absolutely. You, you're completely bang on that. Yeah, this is the strike mission is very challenging for the vast majority of players. Um, but how hard is it supposed to be? Right? I, I, I don't know. I don't know how hard they want this to be. So it's quite difficult for me to make any kind of meaningful analysis on this because I'm not sure what they're trying to do. Like, um, you know, it's kind of like if someone if someone says like, oh, you know, I wanted to jump over this wall, right? But I don't know how high the wall is. So I can't really evaluate if they're good at jumping or not, right? It, it, you know, it, I, that's maybe a, it, it's a shit analogy, but I think you know what I mean, right? Like, I don't know if they've succeeded in this CM because I don't know what they were trying to do in the first place, right? Um, does that make any sense or am I just rambling in? No, no it, it totally makes sense. Yeah. And I, 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 think, I, I think how I've come to see it is that this is just a check mark. This is just a... We need mm. to have a CM to, to lure in, in the players, mm. but we don't really have a, a plan with it. I, I I genuinely feel like CMs are disconnected in every 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 aspect of, of Soto. Like sure, we've got the rewards, whatever. Like there's no everything just seems like it's just a copy paste, here's a boss for the sake of it. Um there doesn't seem to be any ambition. So I get exactly what you mean with, like, where where the fuck are they actually going with this? I, I couldn't tell you. I genuinely can't. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined I, to agree. Like, I think the, I think one of the reasons why they keep making strikes, and th this is, okay, we've got to be really careful here because we're all, we, this is very cynical. This is an extremely cynical perspective here. Um, but basically what, what, what Dora is saying, and I think I'm kind of inclined to agree, <laughs> Is that they're doing it just so they so that so that when someone asks them, does this game have like raid content, they can say yes, right? Um, to we that. have these. CMs. It's we we have it. Like it exists. Like we have something for you, right? Like so that um because it, I'm not there's obviously like going to be some pretty negative press. Like if you go like oh yeah, this game has no end game. This is something that Guild Wars Two has struggled with, right, from the beginning, right? Like um the you know the original version of the game, people were like oh yeah, game's got no end game. And people still repeat that to this day, even though it's not really true, of course, um, uh, about the game. So it's just there so that they can say that it's there, right, uh, realistically. Like, even obviously, though, the main focus of the game is, like, entirely around, like, open world and story content um, these days. Like, the CMs exist for the sake of existing um, to an extent. Now, that is very cynical. And you know what? I, I can't bear to fully say that. I, I do actually think that, unironically, maybe this is naive, but I really think that there is a part of Ain't It that's like, you know, we do actually care about this demographic and we want there to be something for them. Um, I, I can't help but feel that way, to be honest, because despite what people will say, I'm a Guild Wars 2 simp, I'm afraid. 
Um, so I do feel that way a little bit, but I also do agree with you a little bit. It's kind of, uh, it's ticking well, the box, it, it, right? It's like, like, it's, uh, it's ticking sure, the box. We, we know that a lot of, like, in employees, they're, you know, they're not hardcore raiders, but some are. And, and even the ones that aren't, there's a certain percentage of people who, like, you want to take pride in, in the work that you do, right? Like, you don't want to, you don't want to be like, you know at like an industry convention or something and people are like oh what game do you work on and you're like oh guild wars 2 and they're like oh that's like the care bear game with no good content you know like you don't want mm. like you want to you want people to go oh wow yeah I, I i saw the raid the race to worlds first in that game that was really you know that was really fun you know like like there's just a little bit like you want there to be good content in your game even if you don't even personally engage with it like it's with anything like if you're uh you know if, if if you're like a movie director you don't want and and like you know just contractually you're obligated to do this like shitty b movie you want to like make it as good of a movie as you can so because you take pride in your work sure but yes i agree with you they need to be more clear with who cms are for and if it means coming out and saying we want cms to be challenging to very good players and we understand that that means that a large amount of the community will never play it say it please and then and then do it you know and then make it that way yeah um and then conversely if they're like we want it to be accessible enough that you know even average players yeah might they might have to work at it they might have to like adapt but they will eventually get it say that like and and we don't expect it to be like a super big challenge for for like the, the super hardcore players like whatever it is like that i mean just i mean they should just say it but but then again maybe we're just being picky maybe they don't need to say it you know maybe we should look at the content see what it is and you know draw our own conclusion you know look at the last couple strikes uh, look at look at how they've been, and you know, do you need a net to tell you <laughs> what the story is, or can you look at it and draw your own conclusion? Because I kind of can, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think I, I feel like the shadow of HTCM is the the confusion potentially, right? Like, um, and the EOD yeah, that, strike that missions. That was the problem, right? Yeah. Like, you they know, raised the bar. Yeah, yeah. So now we're like, wait, you're not hitting the bar. Yeah. So there there is kind of that um, there as well, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, you know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, I do think a clear vision, a clear direction is important with content. Uh, and I, I would like to see that reflected in the strike missions uh, because obviously that's, you know, the content that I'm very much interested in, um, the content that I like. Uh, and I was a little, I was a little sad. I was, I, I, and to be clear, my expectations going in, I was not expecting like something mega hard. I was expecting, you know what? I reckon this will take us, you know, three or four tries. Right, I would have been, I would have been happy with that. I admit it, I would have been happy with that. Oh, okay, all right, fair enough, fair play. That's not bad. Um, the fact that we went in there in one shot, I, I was a little bit sad about it, to be honest. <laughs> you guys did have a couple of heel scourge recoveries, though. We did, but like, to be clear, so... I actually don't think that's actually particularly relevant because the only reason that happened was because we assumed it was harder than it actually was. Um, the reason we died is because we were assuming you couldn't stack the greens, whereas in fact you can. Um, and that's because I, 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 I'm not sure if you're supposed to be able to stack the greens. This is like another thing you get into, but when you're standing in a green and you have more than three people in it, it actually tells you to leave. It telegraphs you leave, right? Like, you know, um, you know, get out of the green. The arrows point outwards. So that was like, oh shit, we can't do that. You can. Um, and I, I think, yeah, is heel scourge pretty bust though? Um, yes, I would kind of say that's the same for all supports in the hands of a competent player though. Uh, in general, I do think um, uh, Arena have difficulty with designing hard content because yeah, of power creep, say. because especially support power level. Like stuff like uh, Herald existing, Heal Scourge, the state of Druid right now, hell, Heal Herald even right at this point, right? Um, like these builds are so powerful that it is really, you have to push it, right? Like, you have to make encounters extremely punishing. Um if you want them to have meaningful mechanics. And that's definitely an issue with this one. The mechanics simply aren't punishing. Like they're too easy to recover from uh, if you know what you're doing, right? And this has always been the Guild Wars 2 problem, right? Like the, the, the better you are at the game, 
the game gets exponentially easier right at that point because you're absolutely right if you go into that strike mission and you have no idea um how to play good builds and how to abuse basically the the combat system and like how the game works you're going to get annihilated uh but if you know what you're doing you will flatten everything with the current balance in the game holy shit like even htcm kind of falls over um at this point if you know what you're doing um you know in, t in terms of your performance like you know it, it, the the Power creep is real, okay? <laughs> Especially when it comes to the support builds, which, funnily enough, is of course like you know the, um, you know the, the defining yeah. point the, of the meta as well, right? Res power of necro and yeah. druid to a slightly lesser extent makes yeah. is a design challenge for Ana to overcome in any hard content yeah. they try to make. They have to add one shots yeah. like pass fail yeah. mechanics that like. Like one of the clever things with HTCM is like you have these greens that you have to go in or else it's a one shot. So no amount of scourge is going to help you. But then there's like knockback CC stuff having yeah, to it's while the you're trying to stand into yeah. the green. Like you can tell like stuff like that is exclusive is like there to like. Is that a fuck you? It. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but like it, but yeah. specifically to fuck you in a way that you can't recover from with like a res, you know. So. Yeah, and to people saying, like, you should go and play WoW, guys, have you, have you not been paying attention? Yes. Like, I am, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, I got top 0.1% in Mythic Plus. Yeah, that's locked in. And I got Cunning Edge on Sarkrath, yeah. And we're, we're I'm going for a 20-hour grind session next Wednesday uh, for the next raid, yeah. I am doing that. And the oh. thing is, I, I'm not begrudging Guild Wars 2 for this, guys. I am saying, uh, uh, look... I'm not expecting this game to be fucking mythic wow. Sure, fine. I'm not expecting anything to be that hard. That's fine. Um, but I don't think that... Um, I don't think it's a good rebuttal to say, oh, well, you know, this other game has really hard raids, so that means ours can be confused and weird and with no clear design direction. I I'm not seeing the connection between these two statements, right? Like, I am not going to say Guild Wars 2 should be releasing, like, fucking six HTCMs a year. No, that'd be stupid, right? Obviously. Like, but I am saying, I think it's important that in the same way that the open world PvE um, has a clear design direction. I think it's important that the instance PVE has a clear design direction. Uh, and I'd make the same criticism of fractals, right, with Silent Surf. What is a fractal going to be? Is it going to be a single boss encounter? Is it going to be more like Nightmare Fractal? Is it going to be basically a five-player strike? These are really important questions that need to be asked about game design, right? And I think it does nobody any good to just write off any kind of criticism about design direction as, well, this isn't a raiding game, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, right? It, it, the game should be as good as it can be in all areas. Yes, I think we can all agree on that. So don't, you know, push the conversation away under the rug just because this other game has good dungeons and good raids. Like, I want this game to have good dungeons and good raids, right? Like, holy shit. Is that, am I insane? No. Well, if they're gonna, do, yeah. if they're gonna put a raid yeah. boss in, it should be fun, you know? Yeah. That's the one thing I will say about yeah. Dagda. Regardless of what you think about the balance, I don't know that anyone thought the CM fight was like partic particularly fun. Like, I don't know. I just you do it and you beat it and you're like, okay, you got my got my loot. But I don't know that anyone was like, man, that was really a fun fight. Mm. And I, I also think this was a really big um, mistake from an optical standpoint. I know that you know, optics, whatever, right? But. The fact that there's no title, I'm not going to lie, that is going to be a doom fuel. Holy shit. Um, because um, people like the, you know, people like titles and going off the titles. Every single CM so far had a title for doing something special, right, within the fight. This one didn't. Why? Okay. Um, why didn't they do that? this time around. Uh, again, I don't think it's a big deal. It doesn't really change the gameplay that much. Hell, even Voidwalker, right? Voidwalker basically means don't completely fuck up the orb mechanic, right? Like, so it's, it's not like it makes the fight harder for HTCM, but it's almost like a gesture, right? It's like, look, you can have a title for beating the boss. Let's go, right? You know, like that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and- Can I jump yeah. in here? Yeah, yeah, sure, go ahead. I, I, I think- yeah. I think if you say some of these things that it's harder to people are going to very easily be like, Oh, well it's just cause you're just such a good player. And you know, your, your definition of easy is different than others. Sure. Uh, Dagdo is easy for me. And that's a problem. 
because typically the other CMs haven't been that easy for me. Dagda, I one shot. If I can one shot that, that's a problem. I'm not a incredible player. I'm I'm not super super skilled. I try really hard and really do my best, but I'm I'm not the same level as Teapot. So to me, I, I would say I'm more of like a, a mid-range skill level kind of player when it comes to raids and stuff. I think that it should be challenging at least for the mid-range. And if it's not, then it has no direction. You have to pick some kind of demographic to target. The CM, the CM just didn't challenge any of the players really that engage with that kind of content or not enough of the players in my opinion. And that's what makes it not really that challenging. If it's not, if it's not sort of dividing the player base into like, Hey, you were skilled enough to do this and you're not, then it, it gets kind of weird. There's, there's too few people that got stuck on it, at least in that initial release. Now, um, I haven't really tried it with the, the new damage. I don't really know when I will. All I know is that I had a lot of friends who since Soto have been playing Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft because that's kind of scratching their end game itch. They like the raids or whatever there. I don't really know how it works, but anyway, they've been doing that and they're like, oh, like the CM, like we're really excited because we can come back and that's the kind of content that's directed toward us. They came back, some of them scheduled time where they could all get together and all of that. And they killed it in one pull. And most of them hadn't played the normal mode once. That was their first introduction to the boss. That's a problem because they're they're all I would say you know they're they're pretty good raiders in Guild Wars 2, but they're they're not like grinding records or anything. They're just people that have learned the raids really well and play multiple roles. And it was way too easy for them. That's really hard to shake after that. I don't think they're going to want to come back and try it with more damage after they killed it because nothing's really changing about the fight. I and that and that's where I'm going back to the it was it's it's just too late. If if you release something like that and it, it is really really easy, you can buff it, but you've kind of killed that initial experience where now nobody really cares because the reason they wanted to do it initially after coming back from other games was because they thought it would pose a threat to them and it didn't. So responding to this comment in chat, he goes, you guys are talking about the difficulty, but you're not the target audience. We don't know who the target audience is. That's kind, kind of, of the target thing. audience is that, not yeah. the target yeah. audience is not like high end raiders or, or, or very skilled veterans because they can easily defeat it one shot. And the target audience is not unfortunately the the open world trash that plays the game oh, and does five K DPS. <laughs> So, <laughs> is there some middle class of player that like is like <laughs> like sort of challenged by it, but you know whatever? Like, I don't think that this middle class is as big is is so big that that is who you'd want to target the uh, the content towards. Like the like, I don't know the. The middle class of people that like do respectable damage and can handle mechanics, but like, you know, but don't like engage with high end content often. Like, I, I don't know if that's a very big number. I don't know. And if that is the target audience, it doesn't, I don't know. It does, I don't know if it's been very effective for them to, to do that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, the CM is still going to be too hard for people that maybe don't understand how to play their class very well, don't understand subgroups. Those, you know, they just have no interest in endgame content. People that can just do the Ice Brood Saga strikes are not going to be able to just jump into Deg the CM. But if, but I don't think that's the target. And if that's not the target, and the sort of the middle ground kind of raider who you know they try really hard, I, I would consider myself maybe in that camp. If if we find it too easy, then where where is the line? Like where, yeah, it's impossible to determine who this is for. I think it just missed the mark there. And 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 the thing about the title is it gives you another lever. Yeah, you, you know? can do an Anka, right? And like if like there was a, a yeah. yeah, Anka is the perfect example. 
you add this title and now it's a title that like you actually like if you go into there with bad dps you will never get the anka title everyone in the group has to have some clue of how to press their buttons in in the right way or else you will never get it and they also have to be playing decent classes like you can't go in there with like I mean, maybe you can go in there with like berserkers, but like it would be—it's much harder to get the title if everyone's playing like a melee class than if people are playing like range DPS. So like it—it—it it, it gave. Like, let's say this had a title that was the same level of of difficulty as Anka. I think people would be mostly okay with this with this uh, strike. Am I am I crazy in thinking that? Like, I would I would agree. Like, let's that, say that you would want because we all one shot Anka. CM that was not a problem. Yeah, then you have gazed into the void, right? But then you yeah. then you went back for the title, and you know you finished the title, and you felt like a sense of accomplishment, and you're like, okay, this was a, and you had an overall positive view of the strike. So my theory is that if they had had that for this, we would have an overall much more positive view of the strike. Yeah, absolutely. Just by adding this title yeah. and, and a challenge like a fake extra provision. difficulty level almost right like you have this yeah. you you have this cmcm component to it right it's as you say another another level you can pull in terms of the difficulty like to so it serves a wider audience right but it serves more players yeah and then once you have the title then you have farm content which is what it should be exactly yeah and yeah now it's just it's in the in the farm rotation right there um but yeah I think that probably sums it up on the strike mission, CM. I, I don't think we need to uh, talk again, about it anymore. Another thing that someone said in chat, I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if in two weeks they don't add a, a title and, and an achievement for it. It would be nice, it, yeah. And they're being responsive, one more thing which is I want good to bring up for them the to do it. Yeah. yeah, and I like that they are being responsive. I, even though I, yeah, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't think that just adding more damage and, and, and playing with health values is, is really going to fix it. I think there's like some design issues. Like why do the ads do no damage? Why is the insanity mechanic just not punishing whatsoever? Um, like why are the greens working like that? I, you know, that's not the point. But I actually will 100% give a lot of respect that they're willing to change it, right? Um, and mess around with it. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did add something else to it. Uh, if they did change the way the green greens work or if they did end up actually adding a title um I, i'd be very happy about that and the fact that they are being more responsive is good i think that's something we've seen throughout sota where right? they added like more story achievements and stuff to the the game after launch i think that type of iterative approach is is very good but yeah snap take it away get in there i think there's one really important conversation when it comes to this strike and the title and lack thereof why why isn't there a title when every every other time there has been is there a reason for that was it just they didn't think about it or was it actually intentional and i kind of wonder if it is intentional but i'm not really sure why that would be the case curious if you have thoughts on that it brings people back later on in two weeks yeah, could be. That could be a strategy. I mean, I it could be a very poor D chess to do that. But I, yeah, I, I don't. If think they were going to do that, why wouldn't they just say they're doing that? Like, oh, we're adding the CM, CM, like the title and everything will be available in two weeks because then people won't, you know, freak out about it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm not sure if I can really come up with a reason. Like, there's probably some dev time that goes into that. Like, you have to come up with a good idea. You have to test the idea. You have to you know, figure out like how the title is going to activate. You have to make sure that the title actually activates correctly. So it might be a development constraint thing. Um, I, you know, some people said this, I actually don't think this is the case. Some people were saying that they don't want to add it because of the kill proof stuff. I actually don't think Anik cares that much um, about stuff like that. Um, not when it comes to titles anyway, that they don't like kill proof in terms of like the little tokens. Um, but you still have like the chests that you can, you can, link right like the coffers. so much worse yeah they're, they're, crap. yeah the calls are way worse by the way because you can actually open those and they're gone forever that that is way worse to be honest yeah, i i have um, no kill proof on yeah, the strikes because yeah, yeah, yeah. Really i opened yeah. open all my coffers and i didn't yeah know. it's actually it's crazy really that part of your reward you don't get to have because you of need kp yeah yeah, yeah. So it's stupid. actually kind of dumb um to be honest i don't think it's that like some people have said that but i i don't think so i i think most likely if i had to um you know put money on it i'd say it's dev constraint um to be honest um it, yeah, they come probably on. looked at something that was yeah. easy to cut and yeah, that was it's the title. to save time yeah. and that was it. Like, let's be honest, okay? Like it's obviously not the main focus of the game. Um and you know the title is kind of like 
you know, it, it's it's window dressing, right? So it's probably like, if you're going to cut something, it's going to be that. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's probably the most likely scenario, I think. Such an easy type. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure we could easily brainstorm a couple good ideas for what what a yeah, good I, title. Yeah, I, I think an interesting one actually would be similar to Anka. Um, Linka was saying I'd say a slight variant because you could actually kill her without removing any of her stacks. I think it would be interesting if it was you need to kill her without ever removing all of her stacks, right? Um, so you go down to five. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can also do a trick because if you pull a soul feast onto her, that will actually give her an extra stack. So you could actually remove Go one stack yeah. dra drab a, uh, drag a soul feast over her remove another one then she'll have one stack um and then you'll have to repeat that process so you'd ha you'd be oscillating between like five stacks and one stack throughout the entire fight and you'd have to it, it would be a dps check it would be a relevant dps check to be honest if, if you if it, so there's something like yeah you, yeah you could come there's something you could do right like uh, for sure to to make it happen yeah yeah they should do it what do you think snub I, I don't know. Dude, I don't look really at him. He's drained. Uh, he's the man's drained. I, I don't over really. There. This is what happens when you get thirty super, guys. Holy shit! Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't have a super strong opinion of like how they could make a CMCM or a, a title or anything. I just find it really intriguing that they didn't put that in, because I think that if there were something like that, then all of those people who had killed the boss first try on the CM wouldn't have been as bothered. I'm t I'm telling you, I had multiple teams of people who have been sort of taking a break from the game, came back specifically for Dag to CM went in that you know they all prepared in voice were all ready to go talked about what the comp they were going to do they jumped in they had never even done normal mode or maybe only a few of them had and they killed it in one shot and you know what they did after that they immediately logged out and all played final fantasy together and i just this is just like fucking losers it's it's just what? not if if there was a title, then maybe people would have had to chase that in some way, and that would have held people together. But it's it's pretty. I don't know. It it was a really bad experience. I I think that really hurts the demographic of people who enjoy ra raiding and strikes. Mm. I I think it does. I think it's really damaging because now they're like, okay, well, I hope the next one's better. I I get. <laughs> Is that what they do? They just they go, well, I hope the next one is a better first experience. Acceptance. I mean, it's very obvious what the Saris title is going to be, right? Like, there there will be one. It'll be ne not disempower, don't disempower any mechanics. Yeah, right? for like, sure. I think we can agree that's coming. Yeah. Very likely. What, very likely. Either that or, like, that's going to be, it's going to be don't disempower any mechanics is the default and you won't be able to disempower. Yeah, that will be the CM. Yeah, for sure. It'll be interesting. I want to I want to address something in chat because I, I actually agree with this. It, it's not if there if there's going to be a title in two weeks. I actually think the best play is to say that, even if it was a miss, if it was a bug, it, it doesn't really matter. If it is going to come out, they should have just said, "Hey," and just so you know, there is actually going to be an extra little challenge for a title coming out in a couple of weeks. So enjoy strategizing and figuring out the CM for the next two weeks. I think it's a mistake to say nothing because now we're all left to think, well, is it a bug? Do they just not want titles anymore? Or mm. what's the deal? Gotta wonder. Yeah, it's a mystery. Who knows what goes on at Anet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at all the fast food restaurants within a certain oh, yeah? square mile which one's going to be next to see who their next partnership is going to be with and there's some interesting choices on, on the menu no pun intended all right you know what's next <laughs> here we go I want to talk about the new combat stuff that's going on we've got new weapons and we got new relics we haven't got new weapons yet but we have got the teasers uh, I think these are actually quite cool all I'm right. enjoying the teasers I'm having fun with them um, you know, warrior staff guys. You've got our, you know, mace ranger. Uh, we've got axe thief. All looks pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we've got the new relics being added into the game. I guess we can we can probably do relics first actually because that's 
That's fast. I, I, it's fast. And I, I'm actually feeling really positive about them. I actually really like them, uh, the new ones. I am loving the fact that the Blast Relic, Relic of Caracosa, you do an AoE heal on Blast. It's actually dethroning it's a, Monk. It's a real yeah. heal, too. It's really it, good, yeah. It scales yeah. well with uh, healing power yep. also. Yeah. So it is a very powerful Relic. Yeah, I, I actually really like that because it's not something that you draw on every build because obviously not every build will be able to utilize it super well in, in the support world. But uh, I really like that they tuned it aggressively so it's actually good good um and on many builds it is getting a lot of value on droid for example on heal tempest uh it's very high value for the same reason i think um staff warrior will be good on yeah because that will have blasts yep for sure yeah so you Warhorn's will get some blast exactly it's gonna be so good yeah yeah, yeah 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 when you have that offset it's gonna be very very juicy i definitely enjoy that i like that the relics i feel like the relics that we got with this patch are the kind of thing that relics maybe should have been the entire time right they're 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 kind of wacky they're pretty niche right but in the good way right so it's not like niche as in it's complete dog shit or it's like broken overpowered in a certain situation they are situational with how you might use them and on what builds might end up using them which i think is kind of the original intention of what relics were supposed to be they're like a very important part of your build that you know kind of activates your build in some way kind of enables your build um so yeah i'm actually kind of a big fan um i i'd like to see more like this in the future because i think that can that can really allow the relic system to do what it's supposed to do i think a lot of the core relics that saw a lot of play especially at the start of the expansion people found very underwhelming because it was like oh you just do more damage now or oh you heal more wow very exciting they they shouldn't exist no like relics the best general, damage or? relic should be like the saris i hell yeah thing the eye just like, like the at least just do something and look cool you know like, literally surges of eyes that would like, be, yes that would be like, something. i don't know i i look at the um the the chest you get with the thing every one of the relics in the survival chest is cool yeah you know like like it doesn't none of them add damage they all give you like a little bit of utility um some are cooler than others but like the, i don't know that that's what they should have all been they should have all been like some a little bit of extra utility that you get especially since they buffed the sixth bonus on all the runes anyway mm. so that we weren't really losing any damage they i feel like the thief uh and the firework and even like the the, the fractal and akeem relics were sort of like cop outs and we would have been better off without them boom Relics are weird to me in general. Um, to be honest, I don't even know the new relics that came out. I haven't really engaged very strongly with the relic system in general. I, I'm not really sure what relics were for exactly. I, I, I don't quite get it's it. Vertical it, progression. It, that's, that's it. It's, it's a vertical progression slot that they added. Yeah, they added a new gear slot. To I them. think also so that you, um, there was more customization. I think there, it, it, it's, the system has potential. I don't think it's been fully utilized yet. Um, you know like because previously you'd, be, you'd sometimes be almost like forced into a certain rune choice because of stats i think particularly around precision right like you know you you need to crit yeah, cap, that's true. so you kind of are forced to use a certain rune, even if the bonus is kind of mediocre uh because there's like no other option whereas now because stats are decoupled i think there's some license for creating um some kind of special combos i, I think blade swan's a really good example right like blade swan uh, for, for the reason that it doesn't have a relic that it can use right now like blade swan is so different from other builds that it actually struggles to get a lot of value out of current relics which is one of the reasons why it's kind of fallen off a little bit it's more niche these days uh in in pve um but there's some potential for a relic that's gonna be really cool and really interactive like with how blade swan operates so there's a bit more customization there i think um i think nike's right in that some of the customization is actually being held back by the fact that you're there's damage relics that exist and so it's like that's gonna usually dominate uh, even in pvp by the way like a lot of relics that you use are just like pump harder pretty much and just destroy people um more aggressively in world versus world there's i think weirdly enough relics operate pretty nicely in world versus world there's the most variety i think in that game which is actually super cool especially in zergs like there's lots of different builds are using different relics there um and now hey like relic of nurus right this is the relic that i was kind of expecting to be pretty meh and they they honestly it might actually still be pretty meh they tuned it as aggressively as possible so you can turn into a giant monster more frequently uh but 
I don't know. There's, I, I think the relic system is actually good. It's just, it needs to be fully fleshed out and it's being yeah. held back by like kind of like the more passive stuff and the more damage oriented stuff. So, so the benefit of the relics is exactly why we didn't get runes for the elite specs in EOD mm. is any, for PVE, any rune that didn't have power and ferocity, it didn't matter how good the sixth bonus was. It just does, it's totally irrelevant. So they know that constrains their design so much in that they know that it doesn't matter how cool of an idea you come up with for the rune. If it's not power and ferocity, no one's going to play it. And, and that's, and so now everyone's already got their power and ferocity runes because the runes are decoupled from the sixth bone or from the, the relic bonus. So now they can design anything and in, in any way they want. And it doesn't, you're not, locked into having to beat scholar runes you don't have to beat scholar runes anymore they can just everyone just has their dr scholar or their dragon hunter runes and and they're good now they can design it just feels like a more clean system yeah and there'll be there'll probably be relics with every expansion from now on till the end of development of the game so yeah it's a yeah. system that's kind of limitless now do you think you'd feel differently, Snub, if you had a legendary relic? I feel like, um, yeah, uh, this I is kind of, this is kind of like I I'm I'm not just basing that on what you said here. Me as well. Yeah, it's kind of like conversations I've had with you previously, and and honestly, I, I definitely feel this myself. It's like, oh man, dude, these relics are kind of annoying, right? I've 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 got so used to like, oh yep, just change that. There we go. Like new rune comes out, boom, it's in. New stat, boom, let's go. Easy ritualist gear, right? Like, um, but I, I think the way I'd compare this, imagine, can you imagine this like the suffering of being a player without legendary armor when EOD came out and like not being able to get ritualist gear, you'd be so demotivated, right? It's like, holy shit. It's like actual agony hey. um, to get that gear if you don't have legendary. And hell, I, I love this about EOD, right? There just, there straight up wasn't a ritualist backpack that even existed like for like, half of the expansion uh, in the entire <laughs> game. Uh, very funny. Uh, oh yeah. And the, I didn't yeah, even know. The, yeah, the, I think the only dragon backpack was from exactly HTCM as well. So, you know, there's the there's your vertical progression for you. Um, but yeah, it's super annoying. And I, I think that that's kind of the thing with legendary relics. Because currently getting relics for all of your characters, especially if you play a lot of them, it's kind of a drag, to be honest. Like, it is like, oh my yep. god. It's a bit of a pain um, to do it yeah. when you've got a lot of characters. So I think the legendary relic yeah. might alleviate some of your problems. Yeah, I mean, I just have to buy most of them i guess there's some you have to earn but whatever yeah. it yeah th there's some extent to that i think the thing that has me the most confused and i haven't really thought very hard about this so this is not going to come out perfectly but i i was a big proponent of making the game simpler because it seemed that people very much struggled with the systems already people didn't engage with gear they they put on the multiple kinds of runes one in each slot but they didn't get any of the bonuses they just got the first one i always thought man maybe we should just simplify runes so they're kind of like amulets in pvp where you just had one rune and you slotted in and it wasn't even attached to armor mm. it just was there and it gave you the bonuses and that way it would be less confusing maybe is, is that the answer i don't know but that's something that i theorized before so when they added relics i just went Wow, this is another way for people to get really confused about gearing systems. Now, now not only are people going to have all different kinds of runes, but they may not even have a relic. And I actually Luckily, just find that, that to be... the, the first three weeks of the X Pack, there was a lot of non relic enjoyers in raid, raid and strike pugs. But now I'm happy to report everyone has a relic. Yeah, yes. I, I'm not even talking about raids and strikes. I'm just talking about in general. I think people struggle with the gearing system and understanding how it works. And so even in open world events where you would ideally have people contributing to their best, I think people just don't understand those systems and it damages their potential to do more. And and when that occurs, it then the the average power level of players goes down kind of artificially in a sense. And that means that they can't have meta events that are a little bit tougher. I, I think these are all interconnected in some way. Anyway, I, I just, I've always found that a little bit strange. And so mm. then when you couple that with the, okay, well, there's no legendary relic.
So I have to go and figure out all the relics. It doesn't really matter that much. But I, I don't quite get the system, I guess. I'm, I'm not very inspired by it yet. And, but I do 100% agree with the idea. If, if relics just did something cool and it wasn't just a pure damage buff or something, then I think I'd be more inclined to like them. But right now it's like, oh, you just took the sixth bonus off the runes that I most commonly used, and now I have to buy an extra thing and put it on 10 characters. Okay, I mean, I can do that, but I, I, the novelty isn't quite there for me. Maybe it is from a, a role-playing perspective. Maybe it's like, oh, yeah, like because there's so many different options, you can just do, do those fun and unique things. But I almost wish that those like massive damage buffs and those super broken sixth rune bonuses just didn't exist. Like Monk, for example. I almost just wish it didn't exist. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about that? I, I think... Um... I think you, you Snev, you look at everything from almost from a, almost like a too practical perspective. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think Arena really. I think care. it is too practical. I, I'm not sure if people really care about engaging with the systems because I, you're absolutely right. Like, do people struggle to gear their characters? Yes. Do most players have builds that don't really make sense? Yes. But to be honest, Guild Wars Two is set up in a way that that doesn't really matter outside of very small, you know, very low amount of situations. Um, I think it's mostly like, oh man, you know, I've got this cool thing and it summons like a giant eyeball or, oh man, you know, I've got this relic and, uh, you know, makes me run really fast, right? While I'm in combat, like how much faster I am than everyone else. Right. I, I think it's, I think it's totally fine. Um, did I, I, I think, no, I think it's no, 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 this is wrong. Um, I think people do interact with these systems, but they interact with it from like an RPG perspective, like um, not really like a, oh, is this good or not perspective or like, does this make sense perspective? It's like, I kind of like how this sounds, you know? Like for example, uh, you know, I, I bet there's a bunch of people who play Berserker who are like, oh man, I'm a Berserker and I've got Berserker stats on, right? Like, oh, you know, I'm a Guardian, I've got Knight stats on. And I'm serious. And you know what? I'm not gonna, I, you know, I'm not making fun of that. I'm saying that people are getting immersed and like they're RPing. Right, and they're like, "Oh man, I've got like relic of the Zephyrite right now, and I can summon all these crystals on my elite skill." You know, I, I think that's the purpose of relics is to be cool RPG factor, right? Um, rather than, uh, oh yeah, this is like an extra layer of complexity to like min max and optimize your builds, um, and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Let me interpret that for a second because. In the past, in some of the ArenaNet live streams, they've said that they wanted to reduce the number of bad choices. Mm -hmm. Do you think relics accomplish that or make the choices more complicated? I think they were talking about that specifically with regards to balance, right? I think. With like, um, well, well, wouldn't relics be included in that conversation, at least to some extent? True. Um, that's a good question, actually. I mean, what, weirdly enough, like, runes in general are better now. Uh, so... Uh, is, is it just a net neutral, then? I, I guess I guess I'm just a little bit confused yeah. about relics, because to me, it makes it yeah. more complicated so, for so players to make choices. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Yeah. Here's the point. There was no point in them adding new runes mm. to EOD. No because point scholar whatsoever. Runes exists. Because if they weren't better than scholar runes, they were or monk runes, they were useless. So wasting even a half of a second of dev time on those was a complete waste. So now with the current relic system, adding new relics is a good thing, and it's something they can do every expansion from here on out that doesn't that is a good use of dev time because eventually so i i assume that they will have expansion relics that are better than thief relic and mm. and monk relic or they'll nerf monk and thief relic yeah uh, and make it uh, a little bit more open but the point is it's at least worth their time to add them to every expansion and every patch whereas before the relic system there was literally no point in adding relics or adding new runes to the game. Like, it gives them more design no space point. for well, sure. It definitely no, does. No, I, and and I, I, it needs horrors. They ain't it needs things to add to expansions to pad them out in terms of features. Like, so having this thing that they can add to every expansion forever is good for them from a, from a padding out the X, X pack mm. with features. So it's purpose was just progression. That's it is kind of what I'm getting out of this then. 
No, they want to add more runes. Players want more runes. Players want more things like that. But they were constrained in their designs by by the runes that already existed. So now they're not constrained. I, so they can design anything that their brains can come up with, and it's well. I'm fine. I'm not sure I fully agree with that because they could have theoretically just made runes that did the same thing. So you're gonna have scholar runes, but just with a different magic bonus six bonus yeah like yes i i know that sounds stupid but i <laughs> that yes you could you could theoretically have like, isn't there one where you but summon like a rock dog with the rune now, or there it, used like, to be there, then there might be one good rune per x pack yeah but now i thought we were saying that it, it's irrelevant six. whether or not it's good it's about the role play but the people that care about the stats don't care about the role play the people that care about the role play don't care if it's better than scholar like the ain't is not necessarily I, I think ain't does this is 100 done for people that care about their build um okay so relics just give space to allow people to pick the rune that they probably already already they yeah already people picked. were all but then people were gonna there's take... like three rune three relics after that they could pick from it's just more choices yeah, people were automatically going to take Monk and Scholar Rune no matter what. Those are just the best. And so now they have potentially 100 choices of relics that are in play. I, I think I guess... what, what Snoop's trying to get at is could they just have merged the two systems and just like deleted the concept of stats and like just given you like crazy wacky effects that you attach to your build, right? Like could they have done you, something I mean, like that's that? one way you could have and, done it. And they definitely could have done, yeah. Um, why didn't they go that direction? Good question. I actually do. I am inclined to agree with Nike that they probably wanted to add progression systems and un stuff to unlock. Um, so yeah, like it is an element of progression, literally vertical progression in this case that they added to the game. Uh, and that probably was why they did that instead of kind of like just deleting runes and entirely replacing them with relics would be yeah, my guess. And I'll be honest. My the, whole point of this, the 30 is minutes that... I spent unlocking the relics that I needed for my builds at, at Soto launch was the most fulfilling 30 minutes I've played in the game, you know, since I've gotten full legendary because I'm actually making my builds good and getting the gear that I need to play my builds, which is why I play a role playing game. You know, that's like one of the fun things in a role playing game is upgrading your gear and getting your build online. So that was actually fulfilling. Yeah, and, and I agree. I, I think that is fun. I, I guess I'm, relics have me confused because I think they accomplish some things for some players and they detract from some of the goals they've said previously. So I, I suppose I look at this and I go, I wonder if it's a net positive or negative and how that works exactly. I, I don't know if that's really something you can feasibly measure, but it is intriguing to me that they wanted to make things sort of... They, they wanted to make choices less punishing. And if that's purely from the trait aspect, then they've certainly accomplished that. But if if you look at gear, they've now made it just kind of more complicated. But perhaps the power creep is to an extent where those choices actually are almost irrelevant. And it is purely about the role play. And if that's the case, then relics accomplish their goal very well because they do give more options for the people that wanted more options for builds and rune combinations, etc. And they also allow players to role play and do some kind of quirky, fun builds with them. Yeah. yeah anyway, I agree. The, the mistake was making thief relic exist. Yeah. Or firework it, relic. Some of the yeah, firework relic, thief relic is kind of a problem. Fractal relic as well. Um, and Akeem. Akeem, yeah. Just get rid of those four, and all of a sudden we're in a different yeah. game. Yeah. It's just the the what. I think the, the key with making a system like this good is they have to be situational, right? Like the problem with um, those relics is that they're like always good. There's, they're permanent value, no matter what. On every, you know, on every power build, you're going to get value out of those. Every Connie build is going to get value out of those. Uh, and that stuff is the kind of stuff that's really hard to balance. It, you know, you can draw a parallel to game balance in Guild Wars 2 right now. What's the problem with Herald? Why is Herald problematic? Because it's literally always good. There's never a fight where you go like, oh boy, Herald's going to struggle on this one. Um, or same with Druid as well, right? Like Druid is like amazing on every single fight in the entire game, right? It's like, oh wow, you know, Druid is going to have a tricky one. I wish we had a heal Tempest right now. Um, lack of situationalness is where you run into balance problems um, in 
in any game. It was very true in PvP. In fact, this is one of the biggest problems that's plagued PvP, funnily enough, as well, is that the builds that do well are the roaming duelist team fighters, right? Like, uh, <laughs> the builds that no matter where you rotate, you're always getting value. Uh, you know, like your Nade Holosmiths, your Renegades, right? Stuff like that. It's the, the roaming duelist team fighters are always the menaces in that game mode um because well, they aren't situational enough it's it's the yeah same thing let's talk about weapons <laughs> yes. oh right that's where we started holy shit. yes we're through <laughs> the relics i mean that took a little bit longer than i was anticipating holy shit but we're talking about weapons we've got the new weapons i'm not gonna lie i think um i'm very happy actually with how the new weapons are looking um i, I can't say i wasn't expecting it um basically it looks like they're trying to really push uh, the weapons to be strong and impactful, almost like elite specs light. I think yeah. that's a good decision, actually. It makes me kind of excited to think what would happen if they reworked like an undervalued weapon, right? Like, would they make it as exciting as these new ones? That sounds good to me as well. Um, but yeah, I am really happy with how this looks. And hell, you know, I, I have to bring up this comment before I open it up to the floor here. Uh, but yeah, one of the uh, balance devs, Trig, actually made a comment in my Twitch chat, which is very hype. Uh, in addition to the heal chrono reworks that are, of course, looking really good. He also made the comment that uh, chrono, uh, Rifle for Mesmer might have the most broken toolkit in the game. I think he said busted, to be fair. But it's along okay. those lines. Very exciting. Can't wait for that one. But overall... um. I think that Arena have designed these weapons intelligently. They have very clearly targeted kind of um, weaknesses or kind of holes in a profession's design. And they are trying to target these weapons in such a way that it will actually create a new build, some new play styles, and uh, shake things up for people who enjoy playing that particular profession, which is exactly what I think they should do. It's one of those, um, just on that thread and without even knowing anything about, but uh, it's one of those things that is uh, confusing me a little bit about the gun for uh, Guardia. Because I don't know exactly what the, the gun would feel as a slot that's not already, that doesn't already have an option that sh mm. probably should just be, be boosted. Um, I thought it would be like, like middle range DPS. No? Range Condi, right? Probably range Condi yeah or ranged yeah. hybrid right because guardian has longbow and scepter but those weapons are kind of weird right um they are guardian yeah. by yeah. default it's still everything's great. hybrid because of the yeah. way it does burning exactly like, through the f1 right so yeah i, I think it could, it could be a lot of things it could be i think i'm it looks like they are making a good chunk of the weapons more on the hybrid side so that even if you don't mm. play a particular build your build might get some value out of it i think very notably the um ranger mace is a um hybrid between healing and maybe some power damage in there it's like a support hybrid weapon the offhand is more of like a a sustained weapon probably going to see some play in pvp uh thief it can be power or condi right? Depending on your offhand. Really cool design there, actually, with the, the spinning that. axes that kind of go out there. And I love that they're adding these extra mechanics to the weapons. Like, they all have a, a special gimmick, almost. I guess not warrior staff, but hey, you're a warrior. You hit things with a stick. Um, so yeah, I the, think that's good. The axe for the the is definitely the thing that I'm yeah. most excited for, because like, I have been wanting an AoE cleave something for Thief for the longest time that wasn't just fucking shitty long or short bow. And this seems to have actual good potential. I am, I am cautiously optimistic. I love, I love this. I want it to to really be good. Yeah, and it I agree. Interesting. Yeah. It does sound interesting. Yeah, it's it's very juicy in my opinion. Um, I'm looking forward to all the reveals. I also like that they they're actually doing these reveals early. Like we we um, I think communication around this stuff is actually really important, especially for more veteran players. Like we know the balance notes about a month in advance. We're getting these weapons revealed before. We're doing another extra live stream the day before the beta, which is the same time as the balance patch. I really like that. I, I think it gives you something to chew on and speculate about uh, while things are are moving along. I, you know, I'm ready for my heal berserker. You know, let's go. Uh, that's some, you know, some hype content. Heal Chrono, Heal Berserker. It's good, you know, it's good shit. I'm actually kind of curious, Nike, how do you feel about becoming a I mean, I have no man. interest in playing a healer. Uh, yeah, I thought so. On a warrior, mm. especially. So, it's whatever for me. But we all know what's going to happen is that the staff will not be a good DPS weapon on warrior. And people 
who want to role play as a paragon or as a staff wielding warrior monk or something are going to complain until Anet buffs it so that it can also be a viable DPS weapon. Mm. And it might take like three balance patches from now, but mark my words, eventually it will be a reasonable DPS weapon. I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it launched as a reasonable DPS weapon. I'm kind of expecting, I mean, at it. least from the PvE perspective, all of them will probably do good damage. Maybe not best in slot, but I would not be surprised to see warrior staff actually kind of blasting um, in some situations. Uh, purely because, again, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think people want to use these weapons, and I think Anet want to make sure that people are using these weapons. Um, like, uh, and that there's at least at least it's interesting to you in some way, in the same way that an elite specialization would be, because they're putting a lot of effort in. Um, you know, I, I think the uh, the ranger mechanic where you build up stacks of a buff, then you go huge, right? Uh, you go like you go massive, and you can just go on a rampage, right? Like you build up these stacks of a buff, then you consume them when you get um over five stacks, and you just go crazy, like you get stability and you actually grow in size. You're gonna run around mashing stuff. That's really cool. The thief axe mechanic where you throw the axes out and they stay spinning there, then you recall them with your jewel skill, maybe. And that's a really cool idea. It's great RP there. Uh, warrior staff doesn't have um. A a unique mechanic uh, as of yet but it has like some it has like flip skills that have like a dual purpose to them and it has the advantage of having the bursts as well right which can further add some depth to it too uh it's it's very promising to me i, I like the way they've gone about it and i i'm I like that they're trying to push the archetypes and add new builds to the game because the meta isn't a good spot right now where every class can pretty much find its place in in pve there's like very few builds that are actually bad in fact i think that's particularly why i'm expecting warrior staff to be really good because uh, unironically i feel like the only actually very questionable build in the entire game is heal warrior like that is not good um to be <laughs> to be honest sorry war heal warrior mains i know there's a couple of you out there but it's it's, it's weak it needs to be made better but it'll be better next patch i guess and Power Mirage. I guess Power Mirage is also quite mediocre. <laughs> I don't think that's changing anytime yeah. soon. Unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I do we, the weapons they're, they're are two for two really cool. so far, I'd say. Um, there were some absolutely unhinged comments, mm. of course, on, yeah. on Reddit. People are, people are very yeah. mad about animations yeah. uh, being reused. Wait, what? And I don't get it because in Guild Wars 1, they never added a single new animation after launch of the game. <laughs> Every skill animation was the same in the game. If you were casting a spell that took three seconds, it looked like every other spell that cast that took three seconds to cast. So it's just funny to me that like the the Guild Wars 2 people are like, if if your we if your new weapon doesn't have five brand new never before seen animations, it's 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 proof that Anet's going out of business next week, is is essentially the point that they're all making, which is which is absolutely unhinged in my opinion. Like I don't give a fuck. The game is a visual clusterfuck, like as all MMOs are. So who cares what it looks like? You're zoom you're at max FOV zoomed out yeah. in a group of fifty people. Who cares what animation your character's doing? As long as it doesn't have a nasty aftercast, I don't care. That's the only thing I care about is if it has a nasty <laughs> aftercast that I have to weapon stow. Yeah, I think um, I think there actually will be a couple of new animations as well. Like for example, there was one confirmed. Like uh, one of the Ranger Mace um, animations, I suspect Mace Five um, is a brand new animation. So I think you know, is it? I think like Warrior Staff might not necessarily be getting um, a new animation. And maybe Although the burst, the burst, yeah, the for, burst could might be unique. Yeah. yeah. The burst, I could definitely see that being the case. It would be, I feel like it would almost be a bit weird if they didn't add a new animation for, for the burst in particular, right? Because I guess you could reuse the hammer one or the GS one, maybe, um, for stuff. That would maybe make some kind of sense. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some new stuff there. But yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, they're they're going to reuse animations. That's just, that's just the way it is, right? Like, and they pick the good ones too. You know, Warrior Staff gets to be like a Daredevil and a Revenant. That's pretty cool, I think. I don't even notice that stuff. Well, maybe a little bit, but I don't even think about that stuff. I only think about, well, how does this change the way I interact with these classes and interact with traits and builds and whatever? 
I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm in the minority there, but I, I don't really care so much about that as I do about just how does it interact with the game at large? What does that mean for groups? What does that mean for... Yeah, I guess that's kind of it. I mean, it was kind of the same, just tying it back into Soto, I guess. It was kind of the same debate when it came to all the creature models and, and rigs that were being reused as well. People were complaining about that. Mm. Or not the creature models, but like the, the rigs for it. And I... I don't know. I have a huge respect for the fact that Arena has found a way to optimize their their use of the rigs and the the animations that they have on hand, so that they can they can just streamline their their pipeline better. I I I. It doesn't affect me. Like I I just don't. It's not gonna get my blood boiling. Um, that they're re reusing these things. Honestly, quite the opposite. I can kind of empathize with people that maybe get upset because if their primary concern with the game is sort of, uh, I guess how, like how your player looks and setting up all of that stuff, then they might care about what your player does when you press different buttons, I suppose. But if you're more gameplay focused, I think you look at it and you're like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm glad that they've conserved some time so they can work on other things. I don't think it's it's not very meaningful. I think unless you really care about kind of the the role playing aspect, maybe there's some argument to be made about quality of product, but I it's not something that's personally important to me. So I have a pretty hard time engaging in in that conversation. I guess. I mean, I think um, I, I I to to kind of. Uh, understand what's going on here. Like, if they released no new animations, sure. I think that could be a problem. But that's not the case. There's almost certainly going to be a couple of new ones. I think, I, I don't know, I feel like we're actually getting trolled here, no? Like, this, I feel like this is such a non-issue, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's, maybe it's a non-issue to us, but I, I think some people take it as a really serious issue. They look at it as the quality of the game going down, but... I don't know, I don't, yeah. it just doesn't really affect me, so I have, I have a really hard time engaging with that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I guess we don't actually have that much to say about this because I feel like we all agree that it, the weapons yeah, we, are pretty cool. We, yeah, we agree. Two two. There's no conflict. So far, so we had so yeah. much more to say about yeah. the fucking like, relics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like relics, are, there's a bit more meat on it because it's a bit contentious. It's not perfect. There's, I think there's more to criticize about this. Whereas I feel like, I guess if I wanted to, I could I, I could roast them a little bit and say that, oh man, I really wish they'd showed off a little bit more, especially on warrior stuff. Um, they are, I mean, they are going to show all of it off on a live stream, so I guess yeah. it's whatever, but I, I was I was definitely hoping they would tell us a little bit more. They basically said, "Hey, look, it's a staff, and it's going to heal." But it's going to be hard yeah. to see the animations even in the live stream because Roy's going to die to the the guardian, guardian NBC. He is, yeah, he yeah. actually is. Yeah, he's going to feed, and we will only see the first two skills. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back on gathering nodes in no time. I think the weapons are the mm. most highly desired part about the entire expansion. Mm. I think that also goes back to what I said earlier about they need to think in the future about what they launch with the launch yeah. and what they save for later patches. It, you, you, you don't want to put all your killer features in with the X pack. You want to save some, something, but you also don't want to ship an X pack that that like is a dud. And I feel like this is a feature that maybe should have come with the X pack. It will be interesting because, of course, in, in the way I see it, in fact, I, I think many of us would agree here, I think. I'm, I'm curious what, what you boys think of this. But I feel like the next patch coming up end of February, by the looks of it, is almost like more relevant than the expansion launch. Um, it's going to be Sarah CM. So a strike CM is dropping and there'll be the new map stuff is coming. So you still have that the story and so on. Uh, there'll be new relics uh, coming as well. Uh, legendary armor is actually in the game. Legendary relic is going to be in the game, yeah. um, and there's also likely going to be some, you know, like uh, you know, the, there's gonna be a lot all of the gear. usual shit. Like there's going to be all the you, you know, the the normal Guild Wars two update stuff that's going on at the same time. Like to me, that's like, oh shit, that's kind of more relevant it's than the be expansion, a, it's right? Be a juicy like, patch. It's like, going to be a big one, yeah. It's it's going to be a pretty juicy patch. Um, so that will be an interesting experience, uh, I think. And, and definitely something that might be cool about the new content release schedule is that the biggest patch might not necessarily even be the expansion, depending on, you know, the, you know, your perspective and like what you're into in the game and so on. I agree with Nike that it's pretty important that they consider what things, and maybe they they did, and maybe 
<laughs> yeah, I just kind of suddenly had this realization now. Maybe they did consider that, and the things that were most important to me were not a priority for most people. <laughs> well, I, I just think the weapons, the, the, they didn't have time to, to design and release the weapons before the X-Pack. That's yeah. pretty clear. That, that might not necessarily be a limitation in the, in future, the next X-Pack. But, yeah, for now it is, yeah. But yeah, like, like I, I said, I, convergences probably should have launched in some form with with Soto. Mm. Yes. Wow, we really yeah, have nothing I, to say. Dora, well, start some I shit. Okay, let's do, we, I get toxic. Call him out. So, someone do something toxic. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything toxic. He's got I, I have a, a final. I have a final thought, I guess, on the legendary armor, just on the on the release schedule next time, I guess. Okay. Which is, uh, I think, I mean, kind of we have to release the whole map of Naos uh, with the next patch. Like, it can't be separated into three, because otherwise the legendary armor is non-craftable. Because we can't do map completion. So, there, there's an oddity there in that I, I think the full map will be released, but I think the, the meta, the final boss might be, I don't know, like a corner, or like an addition, or an instance thing. I don't know, but... I don't know. I just wanted to add that there's a there's something weird with the release schedule. Unless yeah. the third map is like a dragon stand sort of situation where map completion yeah. isn't like a relevant thing. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I, well, I I also guess that yeah. I guess that is a bit weird because if they add the final boss on the in the last update, the final boss wouldn't be required for legendary armor. Yeah. Well, I guess I mean, it's, it's not, not gonna, impossible, but, but, uh, right? It it's would, not, not impossible. It, it would be required for the the variant, the tier two variant, which is something. Yeah, we don't well, know what that's going to be. The other weird thing is, along those lines, is that like so, Epark, which is most likely going to be mm. the final boss, yeah. isn't going to be a strike, and it's not going to be the fractal boss. So it's like this is like the the big culminating fight of the X-Pack and it's not like, I guess it's going to be like just an open world thing or maybe it's going to be like, have like a dragon storm sort of situation. Like mm. I, could, I could see the dragon storm thing. Being, it could be like being, a convergence yeah. bot. Like they could reuse it as a convergence boss. Like, yeah. I don't know, but it's just, it's just interesting that like, we'll have Dagda as a strike boss, but Epark not <laughs> as a strike boss. Like, <laughs> It's just, it's just like the, vic the victim of the fact that the strikes have to come out at the launch of the X-Pack, so you're limited by what bosses exist in the first story part of the X-Pack. It will be weird, but I don't know. I, I think they might do it like a dragon stand, right? So, you know, we kind of beat him down um, in the open world, and then you finish him off in the story or something. So you have that... Uh confrontation and i think i i think i think the devs actually didn't they tell talk about this a little bit like strike missions in the lore they're they're like it's like you reimagining how it happened so you're just like imagining it was harder than it actually was right that's i mean it wasn't it wasn't i mean for for some people that were reviewing soto dagda story was very challenging that is true that is true and so yeah I mean, maybe you get her to 91% and you're like, yeah. too tough for me going to <laughs> PvP, buddy. Gotta go. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's big. But anyway, um, I feel like that honestly might be about it um, for us talking about this patch. Have we got anything else? Do we, wait, do we, do we miss anything? I don't think so, right? I, I have one last Ooh. topic. It's kind yeah, of related to... Okay. okay, here we go. Yeah, here we, Snev's about to pop off. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. I think the way that this has been released has changed the way that I engage with the game. Mm. And uh, I think a lot of my critique and a lot of my maybe frustration with some things is actually just that kind of realizing that they're trying to change the way that people engage with the game and make it very streamlined in a sense. Like, hey, you know, these are, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to spread out all these patches and, and do things like this. Uh, but what that's done, and like we alluded to maybe at the beginning of this conversation, is it's made it so that the game is very much, uh, and it, it always was this way, but they're just doubling down on it. Hey, when there's new content, pick it back up, play it, and then when you're bored of it, put it down, and then we'll make some content in a few months. You can pick it back up, play it until you're bored with it, and, and repeat. 
And I think Path of Exile had this big, I, I mean, Nike would know better than me, but my understanding is that Path of Exile really leaned into that and they said, hey, like we don't expect people to stay engaged the whole time. This is why we're going to have this particular release cadence. This is why we do it this way. Um, I, again, I don't know all about that, but my understanding is that's something that they really dug into. And so the way that I engage with Guild Wars 2 has certainly changed. And obviously there's other variables to that, IRL and stuff. But ever since Soto came out, I've been like, huh, you know what? There's not maybe as much for me to super engage with right now. So I'm going to chill out a little bit. And I think this has happened to a lot of the people I know. So maybe it's just a, maybe it's just anecdotal to me, but like my, my entire raid static took a break from the game. And some of them have come back and, you know, they joined other little statics and done little things. But others have just kind of, they, they log in. When the new content comes out, they do the story and then they kind of log out. And so I'm curious if the way that you engage the game is different, if it's better or if it's worse or if it's neutral. Do you think the general population is engaging with it different? Do you think it's just leaned into what the majority were already doing and as a result, people are happier with it? I'm kind of indifferent to it. In some ways, I'm just like, oh, I just feel very differently about how I play the game now. Like, I, I don't take it quite as as seriously in a sense. But I don't know if that's just because, again, there are other variables to that or if it's really because they're doubling down on the strategy. What are your thoughts? I mean... It's a subjective opinion, I guess. And I mean... Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I came back to the game for Soto, so I mean, yeah, I'm, that, that's I'm probably not the best it's benchmark for this. No, yeah, no, I actually think you're the perfect together, benchmark so for this because you're engaging with it in a totally different way, right? I mean, I, yeah, I'm I'm engaging with the game in a different way than I was uh, beforehand. Obviously, I I mean, uh, I I think I said it earlier in the stream as well. I'm kind of in my PVE era right now. It's just I'm I'm casually. Uh, enjoying the game and all the all the facets that I can kind of get around to. And right now, it's uh, very, very grindy. There's going to be a moment in a very, very sh short amount of time where that grind is actually over. Because because rifting is so fast now, that my grind is coming to an end. And I don't know what I will transition to. That I think that's actually going to be a very interesting moment mm. for me. Is like, am I gonna transition back into like doing? Because I I've kind of been wanting to do fractals again, but I don't see myself doing like daily fractals. It's just not, it's just not where I'm I'm at. Like, there's no there's no point in doing that. And strikes don't really appeal all that much to me. Raids is definitely not gonna happen. Like, I don't exactly know what I'm gonna fall on, but yeah, there, there's gonna be a a very interesting moment for me coming soon. Um. Where I kind of have to see if if I want to continue being like as active or if I'm just doing it casually. Because at 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 the moment I'm genuinely just going to moment to moment. Am I enjoying this? And if I'm not enjoying this, I've I've got something else to do. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, look, I'll give a, you know, I'll I'll give a silly answer here, but I think people will understand what I mean. Yeah, I, I think to an extent, um, Soto was kind of a bit of a wake up call to a lot of players. With, um, I think that's what a clear design direction does, right? Um, I think a, a lot of people kind of woke up a bit and realized that, oh shit, I'm not supposed to be playing this game hardcore. This is supposed to be, you know, a game that I just kind of just vibe in, right? Um, yeah, that's where I'm at as well. I, I think that's no secret. Um, uh, Guild Wars 2 is not my main game. Um, and I've realized that playing this game hardcore, it, it doesn't really do it for me. Um, like there are other games that offer that experience a lot better. And there's things that Guild Wars 2 does better that those other games don't provide, right? So, you know, you pick your game. You, you pick your game for what you're looking for at any given time. Uh, and then you move on, right? Or, well, you know, you divide your time according to you know, what you're interested in, um, for sure. Yeah. So I, I, has Soto in particular, uh, changed my engagement with, with the game? It has, but quite indirectly for a, a somewhat similar reason to Sneb. And man, I don't even like talking about this because it is a little bit depressing. I'll admit it, but yeah, sure. Like over the last couple of years, um, you know, my friends and the people I play with have been drifting away and, and playing other games. Right. And you know, that kind of does make the game less 
fun to me, right? Because, you know, like, it's an MMO, like, you play it with other people. Uh, and when the people that I play the game with aren't as excited, it means that... It means that it's very... It, it limits what I can do in the game, right? Like, you know, it means that I can't really play the game how I want to play it. Um, and the game does not really uh, enable or sustain a community that wants to play the game the way that I want to play the game. Um, so, yeah, I I'm... I'm not going to force that. I play the game extremely casually now. Uh, and I don't, that, that's all I do. You know, I just, you know, I just, I just play the game very casually. And I think that's probably for the best. I think that if you try and play Guild Wars 2, like really hardcore, it's, it's, it's probably not going to end well for you, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I should specify hardcore as well. I mean, kind of competitively, I guess, when I say that. Like, you can be hardcore in terms of grinding, like, like, look at Daroya, for example. Um, but that doesn't do it for me. Right, like if I'm not doing something competitively, I'm not interested, uh, to be honest. Um, and that's not a slight on the game. It's just that's my requirement for what I'm looking for. That's the type of experience that I'm looking for is a more competitive experience. That isn't really something that's offered within Guild Wars 2. Uh, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I therefore get that in other places and I play other games competitively and I do things in real life. You know, I've been doing all... I've been... Uh, I've been focusing a lot less on the game and a lot more on stuff like real life and uh, in this case world of warcraft because those things are competitive guild wars 2 isn't um and doesn't mean i don't enjoy guild wars 2 it's just i do different things for different purposes right yeah i guess for me maybe it's because lots of irl stuff happened all at the same time as soda coming out but for me i just my it's also my pve era like i I don't really, I, I don't really engage. It's kind of weird when I say this because I still really like raids and stuff to some extent. But I, when Soto released, I don't know exactly what happened, but I was just kind of like, oh, you know, they they took the weapons off of things. That you know, they they made a bunch of big changes. They added relics. Then I went, huh? For some reason, I just suddenly don't enjoy raids as much <laughs> as I as I did like a month ago, and so. I just started engaging more in just random open world stuff and kind of wandering around doing meta events. And that was kind of it. So it, ch it changed the way that I engage with the game and maybe toward more of what their target demographic is anyway. And I, I don't know. It's, I, I think that's kind of interesting. Maybe that's what they want is they want to say, Hey, we're really going to do what we know we're good at. And uh, we hope you'll be along for the ride. And then they will you be along for the ride yeah. now? Well, I mean, look, I I love the he game. hates the I game. Mean, he despises Guild <laughs> Wars Two <laughs> <laughs> collection of Snap quitting Guild Wars merch. Snap is done. Ridiculous. Um, I still like the game. I just engage with it differently, and it's actually sure. funny because what this what's happening is the way that I engaged with the game five years ago is the way that I engage with the game now to an extent. Five years ago, didn't really think as much about is something super optimized or, you know, I didn't really think about that as much. I just played open world stuff and did meta events and got rewards and went for those little micro goals, I guess. And then for a time I was just really hardcore, but like, how can I be a better player? How can I express skill better? How can I, you know, build teams better and, and all of those things. But I view those things as less important to me now. And I'm not sure if that's a result of Soto or if that's a result of, you know, I turned 30 yesterday or, or what, cool, uh, but I just, here we birthday, go. Yeah, yeah, regardless here of it what comes. it is, I think it's intriguing and worth talking about. Yeah. Cause I don't know if other people experience it too. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, look, I think we're somewhat similar on this. I don't want... Okay, look, this is going to sound weird because, of course, I think a lot of people who, who play Guild Wars 2 actually like this. I do not want a game that wants me to put it down. I want a game that says, come on, you think you're good? Come and get me, right? That is what I want out of my video game. I do not want a casual experience. There's nothing wrong with that. I have no problem with casual experiences. I have no problem with games offering both, right? But I do not want a game that says, oh, yep, you're done, come back in three months. No, I want something that is constantly going and I can just play every day and have a competitive experience with other players. I want to play with people who want to push the game to its limits and want to beat the game in every possible respect. 
as hard as possible, as often as possible in every game mode. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, and I really struggle to find that in Guild Wars 2 um, these days. Like, it's been fading for a while. You, you might be saying, Teapot, pff, uh, yeah, no shit. Have you been paying attention for the last couple of years? And you're right. Um, I would say that it has, you know, that part of the game, like that competitive scene in all game modes have essentially been in decline since, well, to be frank, honestly, Path of Fire, the start of Path of Fire is when, when things started to fall off a bit uh, after raids slowed down, right? And after PvP slowed down, right? And Path of Fire, you know, kind of memed all over. <laughs> World vs. World got very abandoned in terms of balance and so on. And Path of Fire. I, I'm not here to give you the full history of the game. But yeah, like that started declining and I, I think it's kind of hit critical mass for me at this point because, you know, it, my, my community has like decayed over time and it gets to a point where you get to the point of critical decay right where there's nothing left um and yeah that's that that's where we're at now uh, a little depressing segment at the end of the tea time and, and it is what it is well, right it is what I'll it is i don't think i don't think i think i'm not depressed about it or anything i i, I actually want to go back i kind of regret talking at the beginning of this podcast because i just shouldn't have said anything when it comes to the legendary armor because uh, this is all tied in. Um, it's just a changing perspective. And I think I have some personal resistance to change like we all do. And it, it, it like makes me uncomfortable. You have <laughs> truly turned 30. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I just feel uncomfortable with it. I, I think it's really, the game has shifted a lot and, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But when I when I look at what my priorities and stuff are, they're it's just I don't know. I just feel weird about it. I I really I think for me the peak Guild Wars two experience for me was when I was first maybe when I was like four or five months into raids and everything was still kind of I was learning something new every day and I really enjoyed getting better at the game and I really enjoyed seeing my numbers go up. Um, but to me now. I, I just don't personally value that as much anymore. And again, it just keeps going in circles, but I'm not sure if that's a result of the game kind of constantly telling me that it's not as meaningful, like it doesn't matter quite as much, or if it's just me going, ah, you know what, my mindset has shifted a little bit. Maybe I don't care. Like I, I go into that strike with you, Teapot, and I look, actually, no, a better example is somebody invited me to do HTCM the other day, and I hadn't done it in ages. I didn't have anything equipped to do it with. I barely know any DPS rotation at this point. Essentially, I'm, I'm being carried. And so I went in with NG and, you know, okay, mech sucks. Don't do that. But that's what I had originally done HTCM with was, was rifle mech. So I was like, oh, well, that's where my muscle memory is going to be for this fight. So then I switched to hollow, and I was just getting owned by everyone i was making tons of mistakes and at the end i felt like really shitty about it to be honest like i i i don't know if people could tell on stream but i i felt really shitty about it because i was like man i let that team down and i'm mm. like really sad about it but what i was more sad about was i also was kind of like but i don't think i'm gonna do anything to get better <laughs> <laughs> and oh, no. that's that's like that's kind of like contrary to full circle to my mentality in a sense. So I felt this weird conflict within because I was like, well, I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to take the time to really go and improve like I normally would because maybe I don't have the time as much or I'm probably not going to be engaging with HTCM every week or anything. But, but I still know that like that's such an important part of the game. It's something that I really enjoyed. And so it, it's a very strange feeling right now. Very strange feeling. Hmm. Yeah. Part of my acceptance phase was to basically realize that it wasn't it meaningful at all. It's all just a game. Jesus. And, I mean, but but it it, it is. It's and true. I, and yeah. I, it's and I, true. I have to I have to kind of hone in on that that you said that maybe the game isn't as meaningful uh, to you anymore. And maybe you're right. Maybe it's just well, it, it, not that the game isn't meaningful. It that getting more skillful at the game isn't meaningful. Like, I don't really right. care as much as I used to about trying to get 1% better at DPS, which is weird because I constantly preach, hey, try to get 1% better than you were the last time. So I'm kind of stuck in this awkward feeling because it just isn't... Well, it's sort of natural. It's not, I mean, there's diminishing yeah. returns. Like, the better you get at the game, the harder that 1% and more elusive that 1% is till it hits a point where it's like, 
the amount of work, not even to gain the 1%, the amount of work you have to put in to tread water and not get rusty is more than I'm willing to put in. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just natural. You eventually hit an equilibrium that's comfortable for your lifestyle. Yeah. 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 I just missed like the, uh, I missed 20 hour grinds. Okay. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's what I miss, you know, like it, just go if, rifting. If, if, I, if I'm, it. if I'm, if I'm being honest here, like when I think about what was the most fun I had in the game, it was playing world versus world for 12 hours straight, uh, every Friday, pretty much. That's what I'm talking about. I want that. And you know, maybe alliances can do that. Maybe. Um, uh, I think, you know, it will be difficult because I am basically a solo player at this point. Like back then I had a massive community of people who were like really all wanting to go hard on the game. Right. And like, everyone wants to like, you know, completely just crush everything and take over the entire map. Right. Like, I'm not sure if I can really get that anymore. Maybe alliances uh, can give that to me, but yeah, that that's what I'm kind of missing, right? Like, I I want people who want to go and um be the best raid team. I want people who want to go and um be the best PvP team or be the best world versus world team. Like, that's what I'm missing for in, in my life. You know, I it's not it's not good enough for me to just like play PvP. No, if I'm gonna play PvP, I want to be the best. Like, if I'm going to play World vs. World, it's not good enough just to play World vs. World. We have to make, like, the, the most epic, unhinged guild group ever. That's the only thing that's good enough. Everything else, I'd rather just not even do it. Uh, I will n I will simply refuse to even engage because I just find it boring. Like, if we're not trying to win, there's no point. And I'm aware that... that I'm an incredibly small minority of people who feel this way, right? So I'm not saying that the game should bend to my whims. I'm expressing my perspective, right? I'm expressing how I feel about gaming, right? And by the way, this isn't anything new. If anyone's been watching me long term, everyone knows I've always felt this way, okay? Uh, about gaming. This is not, this should not be a surprise to you um, that I'm expressing this type of, uh, that this is my mentality, right? This is just how I go about things. This is how I play video games. It's how I do stuff, right? Um, like in, in my life, right? Like uh, it's the same thing with tournaments, right? Um, when I'm th planning making a tournament, I want to make it the best tournament possible, right? I want to give you guys the, the ultimate raid tournament or PvP tournament experience. That's why I drove myself to, you know, make all these, you know, wacky overlays, right? And like come up with the good rule sets and make it exciting and make the trailers. It's because I want it to be the best it can be. That is what I want to do. This is how I approach things in my life. Uh, and I want to be surrounded by people who feel the same way as that. Um, I don't know. I would kind of, uh, hopefully I've expressed myself accurately so people can get it. Um, I, I won't like flame me and just say, well, you know, you just hate Guild Wars 2, you're burnt out. Fuck you, okay? I want to burn harder. I'm not burnt out. There's nothing left for me to burn, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. there you go. No, that's a good thing. That's a good uh, note to end on. I yeah, I yeah, think so. I think yeah, that's the, that's the bomb, okay? Right, that's the, that's the bombshell. Uh, to end. I think that's a good place to wrap up that we've got through just about everything for this particular patch. So, welcome back to Tea Time, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the show uh, today. Thank you good very fun. much for watching. It was fun. A big shout out to all of the hosts. And of course, DeRoy, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Welcome back to the it's show. Uh, and you've got to keep tweeting out these grinds, man. I'm always going to be so impressed. Like, <laughs> I, 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 you got to stream it. Like, I know you stream some of it, but you got to do all of it. I want some of it. Liter yeah. Literally feels unwatchable because yeah, it's just but... like going in circles and circles and circles. Like, L it's listen, only it's a, listen, you can only you can only stream. Let that me so tell far. you right now. Uh, in World of Warcraft, there was like tens of thousands of people watching the best teams in the world walk to a seed, right click the seed, and then fly on a mount around all the different seed positions and then loot seed chests after that for like 12 hours straight. Trust me, you're fine. Okay, uh, like you, 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 <laughs> it's not a problem. This is what I need. Okay, like the... <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's gonna be, it's gonna be just a few days left of the, the rifting. I'm not even, yeah. <laughs> You mean to tell me so, that well, like, wow, tomorrow, that tomorrow just streaming T2, let's go. Yeah. Oh, what did you say, Nike? Blizzard stole the crate pressing F gameplay from yeah, Guy Alex's story. Yeah, 
we're like, oh, look at that. You pressed F on the crate and then yeah. pressed F on the NPC to turn it in. Holy shit, we got to copy that gameplay. Yeah. Let's go. We need that in our next patch. All you've got to do is just occasionally, whenever you do a rift, just at random say, I'm rifting! I'm gonna rift! And then- Mom, I'm rifting right now. <laughs> that's gonna yes, keep people entertained the entire time. Or maybe you converge, you go, guys, let's converge! I'm gonna converge! Yeah, or maybe you just say it's rifting time. That's also uh, another option. If you need now. some audio clips for that, yeah. that you can just play, I could provide you with those. Oh yeah? Uh, uh, do you, yeah. you want to do one, Snub? You want to tell everyone that you're rifting? Or, or, yeah. or what? It's actually, you know, the highlight of the patch for me was when we went into the convergence. <laughs> and I just went, I'm converging! I'm converging, yeah! <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I got everyone Beautiful. to line up and gave them a... A motivation. I saw that. Speech. I didn't know what was happening. I thought you were having a mental breakdown. I mean, that, probably, but it's I, like it's everyone content. line up, please. It was funny. I I do that. Funny. I do that in a lot of meta events because I I think it's oh. it's actually really fun to be like, all right, everybody, it's time. Like we're about to go into this thing together, and I need you all to engage, and and then everybody lines up. You know, it's it's just fun. Yeah. But anyway, I had to do it because we had triple trouble and we had to do three mm. takes at it because we yeah. failed and we failed again because mm. we just hard inted. And then I, round three, I made everyone line up and gave them a speech. So <laughs> and we did kill it on the third. Ten hour of silence broken only by random snap sound bites. This, yes, this is exactly what's happening. The final, okay. the final push, the final rifting. Very, very Nike nice. is totally checked out. I mean, yes, as all we should be. <laughs> let's talk about ourselves for a moment here. Gamers, yo! Okay, you know what? We're doing the birthday boy first. It is Sneb. He is 30 years young. Phil's birthday man in the yeah. chat for Sneb, guys. Let's go. Okay. Lead. He is the Royer, most... lead us in a song. Yeah. A happy birthday song. Let's I mean, go. we could. Yeah, it's time. We, we need I to... won't be singing, but I'll be happy to yeah. have you guys. <laughs> I, I, I mean, honestly, I felt, you You're know, like we, we can get Deroyera to sing, you know, like that's what we, uh, oh that's what God. we really need. Um... <laughs> oh, dulcet tones. Yeah. But anyway, Sneb is the most blocked person on NA. What's going on? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's, uh, what's, what's going on? What's up? What's up these days? Uh, well, you know, I'm, Doing some kind of crazy stuff IRL, so a bit busy, but when I do find time to stream, I go and do some meta events. Triple Trouble is my favorite jab right now. But otherwise, I'm best known for helping, you know, get people into raid statics at uh, discord.gg slash skeingang, S-K-E-I-N-G-A-N-G. Otherwise, you can find me on, well, I guess not called Twitter anymore, X. Do people say that? It's kind of weird. But yeah, I'm there at oh, Snebzor, at Snebzor on Discord, at Snebzor on Twitch, everywhere. So that's where you can find me. Yeah, there we go. Next up, we got Nike, who is actually, um, I think, cosplaying Dagda right now with this kind of shade of blue uh, illuminating <laughs> oh, his dark face. out now. Yeah. <laughs> my monitors have a blue wallpaper, so that's the... Uh... The Jotun and Fusion IRL. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can come to my YouTube. I've got some Guild Wars 2 videos. Uh, there's Sometimes they're pretty good. Like, mm -hmm. There's one where I call all DPS players trash. That's a good one. That's a, that's a banger. Yeah. You guys check that out. There's one where I say if you have a main class that you play and you're not willing to adapt, you're trash. <laughs> you, should ch you should check that video out. Um, yeah, and then... Uh, you can come by, hang out for the streams. Interesting stuff going on there, mm -hmm. which I won't elaborate further on. There we go. Okay, enjoy. And finally, we've got DeRoya, the ultimate hardcore player in Guild Wars 2. The most hardcore yeah. player in Guild Wars 2 by far. Oh, wow. When I, is the next uh, stream? When I'll... is the rifting grinding stream? When is that happening? I mean... I mean, either tomorrow or Tuesday, and then it's then that's gonna be that's gonna be the final push, I guess. Yeah, mm. that will be three three legendary armors done. Big, I'm good. When is the um, the tier list, the rift tier list, rift essence tier list? Oh, that that is a very quick. Uh, 
I mean, we. I, I honestly, I I guess there is actually uh, room for like making a tier list of all the rift locations, all the different maps, mm. because people are heavily undervaluing and be lazy and just doing rifting and omnitas and don't do that. It's like it's the worst. You are you are hampering your your own progress. Anyways, Boom. yeah, there's a tier list there. There's there a video idea. Thank you, thank you, because I've been. You're welcome. I've been putting out. I I don't know what the fuck happened, but I put out like two videos in a week for the first time in two years. So. I've got that going for me, which is nice. I need I need the video ideas to keep uh, keep that ball rolling. Yeah. Back in other business. than that, other I guess other than the YouTube, you can find me on I don't know Blue Sky. Let's see if you got that. Whoa. I'm not I'm not promoting that other <laughs> that other uh, <laughs> site. So um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Search my name, you'll find it. Hey. Boom. There you go. And of course, you're on this channel right now, so hit the follow button. Okay, follow me on Twitch, guys. Nearly 100,000 followers. Oh, man, what a fantastic arbitrary number to accomplish. You could be a part of that, so you should do it now. You should also subscribe on YouTube, watch all the other Tea Times. Tea Time will return when there is something to talk about. So, whoo, stay tuned, my friends. Hit the bell notification. Follow all my social media. Follow everyone's social media here across all of the channels engage in very unhealthy parasocial relationships and honestly just have a good time thank you very much for watching gamers we hope you've enjoyed the show thanks for stopping by with us and of course we'll see you all next time in the mists in the mists i knew you were gonna fucking do that <laughs>